in. It's been a, a we're, we're live, right? We're live, alive, you know, it feels good to be back. Hello. It was a little bit of vacation, a lot of, a lot of getting back to me. I think podcasting is a lot more of a strenuous job than people would like to think. Because you kind of have to be prepared to have these conversations with people all day long. Right. And and I think a little bit about a little bit of me in the past, in the past few months, was decided I almost got away from myself somehow. You know, like I decided to back up and just enjoy the show. But I think I was enjoying the show so much that I forgot that I'm I'm one of the main characters. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was more or less like I went out to Buffalo. For a week, got back to the roots. Crucial. It felt good. So I'm you like, got the ah, drip now. yeah, you, you know what I mean. The, yeah, the air the, feels yeah. good. Yeah, you know the the people. I love the people over there. I don't want to move back to Buffalo, Buffalo. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. But it felt good to be back, and I was like, you know what? It's time to be myself again. Because <laughs> there is something about us Buffalo individuals, right? We tend to uh, we tend to be outspoken. We tend to talk really. Top grade <laughs> phenomenal shit. Yeah, and we tend to back that shit up too. So, so you know, it feels good to be back, and and and, and, and you know, we got Chris in the building. Mm-hmm. And what better way to come back than this right here, Charleston White? Yeah, Ooh. yeah, 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 man. Yeah. yeah. Do you know yeah. how much shit we got <laughs> from the last interview? Uh, well, well, you know, it was I, I watched the Passport Bros. Uh. And, and 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 all the geeks and the freaks and the nerds uh and the turds get mad because uh they got mommy issues and, and they wanted they wanted they wanted us to to beat up uh, on on Britney. They wanted us mm-hmm. to shame her, they wanted us to uh you know uh treat her how how guys who who resent women uh would treat would have done in that situation. Right. Uh but 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 you guys uh Cause I was sitting over here with a hard dick, <laughs> but, 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 but you guys, you two guys, I commend you guys because uh, you guys show class, professionalism, and, and, and you guys show a demonstration to, to young males and boys and, and, and even them niggas, uh, what a gentleman looks like. Mm. Uh, Appreciate uh, that. Uh, that. That uh, that's what a gentleman looks like. For one, uh, she was intoxicated, so we give her a pass. Right. right, right. A little water don't hurt. Don't she didn't dip. piss. She didn't spit. She didn't calm on none of us. Right, mm-hmm. right. So okay, maybe homie. allegedly. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 homie, nah, man. Uh, uh, when I went back and looked at it, uh, I, I really appreciate you guys because I have a mother, I have a sister, or uh, I have a, I have a daughter, I have aunts, I have female friends, or uh, I have a woman. And, and, and if any of those women uh, were, were in a situation like that where, where uh, they went overboard and went o- uh, over line, I would still want the men in the room to remain men, gentle mm-hmm. men, mm-hmm. gentle men, right. and, and, and still treat a drunk. And I'm not calling Brittany this, but if you perceive her as a drunk bitch or a drunk hoe, still treat the little lady like a lady. Yeah, yeah. Don't stomp down on her. Uh, Cause she done got drunk, uh, you know. Uh, after you, after you done heard her tell a life story, that yeah. would be pretty cold. Absolutely. Well, bigger than that, after I saw how she was treating my dog Shannon, I said, "Oh, she ain't gonna respect me neither." So let me. <laughs> she in her zone right now. Okay. Uh, ain't, oh yeah, 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 ain't, yeah. Ain't no point in amping up because she talking to the champ like that. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Seven yeah. foot, three hundred pounds. You know, it, it, it's just a lot of people either. Weren't around their mother. They don't have sisters. Yeah. Or they're under the impression that they are an alpha male. <laughs> they're a high value man. There's right? no such thing as a high high value man. And 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 and, and what makes what are you leading to be an alpha male? What what's wrong with just being uh because you have something that supersedes the alpha male, the sigma male. The, the sigma male have traits of the alpha and the beta, but he supersedes the he supersedes the alpha. 
So why they done got stuck on the alpha and don't tell you about the sigma? He carry both traits. He can go in in any environment and play like a beta. He can lead like an alpha. But his traits, are, his traits supersede the alpha male. So tell them motherfuckers start studying the, 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 that male, sigma. the sigma male. Because uh. they just be talking. Yep. There's no it such is. thing as a high-value man. Why, you, why do you feel there's no such thing? Oh, uh, because it's a made-up term. It's only it's only a man and a gentleman. It, it, there, there's no other components outside of a man. Once you reach the level that you're a man, what makes you a high-value man? Your degree, your job, your suit, your salary. So, so, it, it, so a, a high-value man. If you take away his title. Can he go talk amongst poor men and still have his way? So take away the high value man's car, his salary. You strip him of that, and you put him amongst men. See what's left. Yeah. See how he stay a couple. He don't have to, but can mm. but can he still lead without his high value title? Very true. I can still lead without a high value title. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, nah, homie. You don't always got to lead by carrying the sword. and you know, Nah, homie. So in a sense, aggressive. does that make you a high value? Man? Nah, homie. <laughs> because it's already hard just being a man. Mm. It's already hard in our time just finding out what a man is. Why I can't just be an honest man? Why I can't be a good man? Man, why I just can't be a man when most of us ain't even seen a man? Most of us are coming out of our mother's home, don't know what a man look like, don't know what a man do, don't know how a man think, don't know what a man behavior is, and don't know how to define a man. That's why we real niggas. That's why we can't let go of our, our, our childhood boyish value system that we had when we were 15 that we still remain and hold on to when we 45. What's up, cuz? On Pyro. When your seasons change, your tune change as a man. I once thought like a child, so I behave like a child. I now think like a man, so I behave like a man. Yeah. Nigga, that's why most of us are still boys, because we ain't never seen no man. We've been watching mama deal with thugs, drugs. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. We hadn't had nobody to sit us down and teach us about what a man yeah. do. It's we a hadn't had no man take us to work and show what a man do at work. So most of us hadn't been to no leadership schools. So... It's all, we already feeling just being a man. Who go up the notch and say a high value man? When the niggas who created the term high value man are unmarried. Unmarried. Non-custodial fathers. There was a time the man owned the woman and child. If the bitch, I'm sorry, if the woman left, the man still kept the children. Mm. Think about that. He still kept the children. Ain't no more men like that, my nigga. You got men that'll put on a dress. You, you got men that still have gang affiliation as men, and they got families at home, and they still, still. rep the gang shit that they joined when they was boys. We, it's so hard to be a man. Who done come up with this high-value shit? Now we got another level we got to try to reach, and it's made up. Your woman define what kind of man you is. Your children define Ooh. because your accomplishments, your salary don't get to speak at your funeral. Mm. I'm going to say it again, homie. Your accomplishment, <laughs> your car, your salary, your, none of that gets to speak at the funeral. That's what defines the man. What are these people saying while you in that casket that you can't hear, that you'll never hear, nigga? Because the man don't get to hear this when he alive. Nobody likes the man because the man have to establish law and order. The man does. You can't go out here like that, dress like that, Betty. Say, cover your titties up, Betty. No, Betty, you're not getting no job. You're going to stay here and you go going to work. No, no, you're not working. The man established law and order. That's his job as a man. He corrects what's wrong. These niggas ain't doing that. They see what's wrong next door, across the street, down the street, and get up and go to work as a high-value man and never correct nothing that's wrong. That is. 
Listen, I, here goes something. And I, I don't want to hijack it. I just had to speak. No, that's no. good. I want to interject in there <laughs> yeah. because it's something that you're saying that's important to me. That's being stripped away from men who like, behave you know? as such. I, 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 I believe, look, and, and this is something that I'm, I'm pissed off about currently, right? Because I'm tired of looking at it. I'm tired of hearing about it. I'm tired of seeing it. If you're a real man, lead your fucking household, mm. right? Because, look, it, your, your wife is going to challenge you. Cool. But if you know what's right for your family and you're trying to create something, don't be a bitch. All right, and I mean, I mean this sincerely. I'm not trying to be a dickhead. I'm not trying to have all these women hate on me, but it might happen tonight. Stop being a bitch. Seriously. Yeah, uh, listen. Uh, I hate the nigga online in the house all day. Absolutely. You're not productive in the house all day. Just... You're a docile individual because, for one, you need sunlight as a man. You in the house with the blinds closed behind a computer screen <laughs> all day long. No woman can respect the man that's inside all day long and he ain't building and working on the walls and painting the building. He on the internet arguing with another man. Back and forward all day long. And you can watch these guys do this 365 out of the year. They did it last year. They're doing it this year. And they're calling themselves men. In the process of them being men doing this, you don't hear women and children in the background. One thing about a man, he got women and children around him. Uh, Orlando, real quick, because the bottle's here. You know what? I'll go run out and grab the bottle. But say the thought, because I like this right now. All right, <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to grab the bottle for They going us. crazy. Y'all you know can't I mean? Go yeah. watch it on the yeah, link. Yeah, go ahead. Hold on. They got to watch it on the link. The hell. <laughs> Hold on. Right. Grab the bottle. This one live. Hold on. How we get this? Uh, what's the link? What's the exact link? It's the Danza. Uh, it should be on the IG. Okay. So if you haven't already, you need to hit that link. It's already in the bio. The Danza Project on Instagram. It's going to take you straight to YouTube or just YouTube. The Danza Project. T-H-E space D-A-N-Z-A space project. P-R-O-J-E-C-T. Let's go. And we live right now, too. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't already, go ahead and get that giant, get that little beer out the fridge, get that little that little cup of wine, whatever it is that you want to get in your group, because we about to go off. Get yourself situated while we get yeah, ourselves. Yeah, just go take us off to the new year. Yeah, we finna you know, dispel a lot of that shit. That they oh, talk. yeah. Holiday season. Uh, I need, I, I need, I need, I need Are you good? Okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, see, uh, this, this new generation of men is weaker. They don't know how to hunt. They don't know how to fish. Mm. Uh, they can't whoop their woman. Change the tire. They can't whoop their woman. Mm. They can't slap. They can't slap their woman and make her sit down and shut up. They can't say, "Bitch, sit down." And she do it. So this man is a weaker form of a man. Yep. This, this, this man don't know. This man can't handle struggle. Hmm. This, 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 this man can't get drunk every night and still get up and go to work every morning so, like the men before yeah. us used to do. Right. We break so weak and call in. Yeah. Yeah. This man, this today's man ain't strong enough, my nigga. Uh, to have, to be honest enough with his woman and say, yeah, I got another woman. Mm. <laughs> this, oh man, this ain't, these ain't them kind of men at all. You're right. It's different. He got to, see, a, a high value man ain't nothing but a trick. <laughs> a high value man ain't nothing but a trick. <laughs> a nigga playing, a nigga playing trick. He got a little money to play trick. Strip his accolades and strip his money from him. And how can he stand as a man? What's left? The, listen, my nigga. The slave used to have to stand on the auction block butt naked. Think about you done been stripped 
to your bar minimum as a man standing naked. What kind of man are you if you stand naked before the world and can't nobody see your house? Can't nobody see your car? Who going to speak for what kind of man you is? Like you said. But most men get to play good men because they get to hide behind their money. But if you lay out their morals, if you lay out their integrity, if you lay out how they treat their mother, how they talk to their aunts, mm. how they treat their neighbor, how they talk to the janitor, how they treat the bomb at the light, how they look down on their drug-using cousins, they project ghetto queen nieces. He's so now my nigga, oh, uh, now my nigga, oh, uh, I stood before the world looking ugly, ugly dreads, uh, coveralls. And when I spoke, the governor would listen. Miss Cecilia Abbott, uh, the Republican Party of Texas. So I challenged niggas, homie. Go to your family reunion. And if you can talk and everybody start listening, that's, you, that's how you know if you're going to be a man. Your 83-year-old grandmama listening to you. Your 70-something-year-old uncle listening to you. That's how you know what kind of man you is. Because now the elders are listening to the young man. Cause they, you see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, it's a difference. Most of these niggas can't go sit amongst no elder group of people, of men feel comfortable and be themselves. So that's why America and, and, and all these other men, see, they create terms. They create terms. That's why mental health and, 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 and ADHD, so they create terms, my nigga, mm. and new words to define things because we can't live up to the old. The old used to be simple. The old used to be simple, but it was hard. This shit today is harder because it's elusive and it don't exist. It's unrealistically. It don't exist. Yeah. What women want from men is unrealistic and what men want from women is unrealistic because this group don't understand the nature of one another. The women don't understand the power in the nature of a man. The man don't understand the power in the nature of a woman. And neither nor understand what a woman does and what a man does. Because they too busy trying to figure out what a woman and a man does. Mm -hmm. A woman is too busy trying to tell men how to be men. Mm -hmm. Women is sitting over here telling women how to be women. That's what Kevin Samuel was doing. And that's why we can't learn how to be men because we arguing with women about they need to be women. I tell my woman, don't worry about what a man is doing when he leave the house. Mm. If mm. that kitchen is dirty, ain't no clothes for, why you worried about what I do as a man? You try to be a better woman. You work on being woman, womanhood. Uh, you work on woman. And, and I be man, but don't you kill woman worrying about man. And people kill themselves worrying what there you man go. is doing, what woman is doing. Didn't you hear what I say? They worried about what you're doing. Yeah, yeah hump, and you and you you losing sleep. You're not eating. Yeah, you're fucking yeah. up your mental. You're in emotional distress, and you can't focus on your goals. You can't focus on your plan. So the whole time y'all in a relationship, y'all can never build because you don't understand man and woman. Yeah. And you, you're fucking up the business. Come on now. That business. is hello. Imagine you and I were sitting here and every time we had a fucking interview, we're having a conversation with somebody. You're like, no, no, no. I don't agree with that. We start fighting with each other every single day. How long do we last? Not long. But how, how far does it go? So, how many people really give a fuck about something that isn't real? And so even, even in, in shit like we're doing right this very moment, you have the people that'll sit there in the comments that believe in this theory and these theories, right? And they're like, no, fight with them, argue with them. Fight back. The thing is, is we are sitting here amongst grown Dialoguing, men. conversating, conversing, exactly. dialoguing. Conversing. You, you say what you say, you say what you say. We don't have to agree. Exactly. You're not going to agree with your mother. You're not going to agree with your children. You're not going to agree with... You're going to disagree. But learn something, motherfucker. Yeah. So this is what I'm saying. Let's come down off this high horse shit. As if uh, a good man can't stand shoulder to shoulder with this so-called high-value man. Right. He had his kid's football game. But his wife make more. She a registered nurse. 
He drives trucks. But he helped put her through school. Right. Getting the kids, cooking, making sure that some got some got more food in the crock pot, bringing the kids with him so she can study, taking his little money, paying this, paying that. But ultimately, when she graduates, she so once she graduates, she starts to make more. Mm-hmm. But he did what he needed to do to support her to get her through it. Right? right? Why she's through? So when she go get the job, uh, she got a big degree. He still got to take up the slack at home. He not cheating. He not abusing her. The kids are well nurtured through, you know, through him doing this. Everybody take. But if the him. world look at him, he driving a nineteen ninety nine car. Mm. That's not a high. He got he, he got boots on and his boots run down. Right. He got a high visibility neon shirt. He looked dirty. He looked dusty. But he a good husband. He a wonderful father. And he's a good friend. And so that's where I'll slightly disagree with you because I agree with you. Yeah. Right? It's, it's fucked up how that sounds. <laughs> okay. I think that what you're explaining right now is my definition of a high value man. It's somebody that is they're there for their family. But let me, they're but, there for themselves. They're there for the people around them. But let me just circle. say this. The people around them don't appreciate the man. Exactly. So mm-hmm. that's what I'm telling people. If you saying you a high value man, and the woman is saying you a high value man, you don't even meet the standards of a man because the man is not appreciated until he's gone. Wow. Go, no man that's it is appreciated because if he's been there from the time he's been with her, his presence make her feel like you. It, you take it for granted. for granted. That's why yeah. when people die, you so crazy because you took it for granted mm. and you don't know what you had until it's gone. The, see, a man can't be measured until he's gone. You can't measure me while I'm here. That's the scariest shit. See, and that's what they trying to do as a high value man. You trying to measure me while I'm here and you trying to measure me without knowing whatever skeletons and oh, demons man. that could come out the closet later down the road. Mm. See, there's two dates that people focus on. Birthday. Celebrate the shit after birthdays and death dates. And and in the process of looking on the birthday and looking on the date you die, you overlook that little dash in the middle. That's the man. What do they say once you gone? Because why you got the money, why you got the power? And most people who use these terms as high-value men are guys with good jobs. That's all I'm going to say. It ain't the man. It ain't the man that who done made children at 14, 17, 20, uh, 25, uh, and 30, and, 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 and then made two more over here and got five out there and two over here. And he's doing his best. So you you see what I'm saying? So, homie, why would we this minute, why why would we devalue a man just to highlight high value men? Social media. (laughs) That's all that is. And so when I look, and so when I look at the man who's doing that, these men platforms don't address men. They talk to women. Mm. So these are the, these, these are, these are, so the high value man, I'm going to describe the high value man in high school. He was a male cheerleader, and he got to go in the locker room with the girls. Damn. And he learned how to talk girl locker Damn. room talk. He learned how to talk girl locker room talk, talk with the girls because he wasn't boy enough and man enough to come over here in the Boys. locker room and talk to these men. <laughs> See, that's my platform is strictly directed Jeez. at men. I don't address nothing woman. It's all gangsters, killers, rappers. Yep. That's it. Kevin Samuel and them was dressing the women. A man can't tell a woman nothing about how to be a woman unless you want to be a woman. Mm. A woman can't tell a man nothing how to be a man unless you want to be a man. Mm. Now, I admit, most today's women want to be a man because Steve Harvey yeah. tricked them in yeah. thinking yeah. that they could think what like a man. I said earlier? <laughs> I'm talking they was about tricked. this. I feel like, right, that, that's, that's the way now. Think That's, like a man. A, a woman, I feel like a, a woman men, thinking like a man is mentally retarded. And I, I, feel and I didn't like mean most, to cut y'all. No, go ahead. I feel most most uh, men like. Uh, excuse, to think excuse like a me woman. if this sounds. Excuse me if this sounds rude. 
But as men, we were brought into this world to figure out a way to win constantly. Yeah. We always figure out a way to win and to survive. If you think like a woman and you're a man, you're automatically headed for failure. Well, that's when you start getting your ass sucked on. <laughs> <laughs> you start putting your hands on the shower, letting her eat you out in the shower, <laughs> sucking on your ass with your legs in there. You can't, you man, listen. Uh, there's no way... Uh, uh, you have to learn a behavior because you can't think it. You have to learn and emulate. So, so a, a, a gay male doesn't think like a woman. He's mimicking and emulating women traits and behaviors, but he don't think like a woman. Because at some point, his penis will still get hard. He can't think like a woman because if he did, his penis wouldn't get hard. Mm. Whoa. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Is <it>? <laughs> Come on, man. We got, let's think science. Whoa. <laughs> Everything would reverse if it did. His science don't allow him to think like a woman right. because he don't have the estrogen to tap in that side of the brain. It's fucking wild. It's trickery, my nigga. Charleston White is the type of dude that'll literally trip your brain. You feel me? You have a conversation with him, but trip your brain, and it's, it's, it's always great conversation. We love having you. Up here. This is this is, this has got to be like a, you know, what I mean, Sam, we got we got a major announcement coming in a few weeks, and we're definitely bringing you back for that too. Oh, most definitely. You know what I mean? But um, I love it. You know, and and I feel like another thing as we're talking about men like this, right? Women, men, whatever we we're supposed to call them. Yeah. We got we got humans. Uh, we we got, call them humans. Yeah, we got academics, and yeah, we had yeah. Saucy Santana. Go on live or go online uh, and literally say that he wanted to rape him. Uh, uh, I got so much backlash for saying that. But they're going to say, hey, but you said something. I didn't say I was going to rape nobody. I wished it upon them. Uh, mm. And, 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 and uh, I speak strategically. I would say things like, before I sell out to a, a fool, I would rather rape. So I don't say I'm, I don't give. I right. make no. So if I if I if, if I'm responding to a threat, or I'm, I'm I'm secretly trying to threat, I make a threat in the name of self defense. You do something to me, I Swat. I ill one of you fools. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I never come out and say directly. <laughs> I say if you do this to me, slap me, I ill you. Right. You see what I'm saying? So it's a difference. Yeah. So but mm -hmm. he came out, uh, as a man that'll do that to you. Now, uh, it's a different type of beef, boy. No, yeah, taste. yeah, <laughs> and, and 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 uh, there was no backlash, and, and I'm saying as straight men, uh, we supposed to be standing with DJ Academics against the LGBT community, demanding a apology, because we can't just think if he if it was the other foot around, and he was it'd a dude. Cr just crazy. think if just think if DJ Academic was a big penitentiary dude, one of them big gangsters. And, and vow out to do that to somebody from the that LGBT community. community. Mm -hmm. They would shut him down. Yeah. City and not only that, flags. you'd be talking about potential charges being placed against this yeah. individual. Yeah. You know what I mean? For bullying, the platforms would definitely be taken down. But, I mean, literally, you could put it any other way you want to put it. Just make, acad make academics a woman and take the same comments that Saucy Santana said. Whether yeah. he is gay or not, there would be a big problem if it was towards a woman or a gay. Yeah, um, you know what I mean, and it's wild to really think about your. But it, it but is. if you make that type of uh, allegation towards a man, or yeah, th that yeah, type of a threat towards trouble. a man, that there's nothing wrong with it. You could say that I'll rape you to a man, and it's acceptable. It's like it's the man's fault; he provoked it. Yeah. That, yeah. So <laughs> what are you then? Oh, uh, you know what I mean, and it's just moment. it's just I feel. I, listen, see, uh, and podcast and see, and beef and exists and amongst people. And, and let, and let it me, doesn't exist and, over here, and I want I do want to add that I, I do stand with academics on yeah, that, and I yeah. want uh, I want him to know that the Danza Project we got your back when it comes to shit. Oh like uh, man, man, man uh, I, I, when, when, when I when I saw what was happening, and 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 uh, yeah, I'm a friend that 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 uh, if I'm mad at you, you know I'm mad at you. Uh, I don't pretend like I'm yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I'm the friend, you know I'm mad. 
Uh, I say to you what I say to everybody else behind your back. I say I'm that friend. Whatever mm-hmm. I say behind your back, I say in your face. Yeah. So, but I'm still kind of fond of you because I don't connect with you and unconnect. You have to hurt me and do something to me for me to connect with you then unconnect. So if we fall out, we still connected, right? So I ain't talked to Ack in a year, year or so. When I saw what was going on, I look at this and say, right is right, wrong is wrong. He wrong, act right. Nobody's standing with right. Everybody's trying to, uh, everybody's trying to cheer on something that would destroy academics. They trying to get him to fight mm-hmm. a, a a funk, which is crazy. Replace the F and put a P. If you, if you can read and comprehend, mm-hmm. so so uh so they trying to cheer this on for a benefit of monetary value, but it would destroy the man, yep. right? A man ain't got no business fighting no funk. You don't got much to win unless they uh, unless they fucking, unless you fucking the funk. Y'all ain't got no business fighting. A man by our loud and said, "Oh, you got it." Right. But man. one thing about a funk, when it gets around man, they normally be quiet unless they try unless somebody done flirted with him in the room. <laughs> normally, a funk gets around that spirit can't inhabit. Around a, a mask now, and, and, and that spirit won't challenge a masculine spirit, right? Uh, just, mm. But 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 this is what this. But we got to look at the root of this situation. DJ Academic says something about the city girls and the man playing like a woman come out to defend the ladies crazy. in the name of a funk. This shit's crazy. I'm gonna say it again. The the biological man in him. Because man protects. The biological man came out of the sissy fine yep. man. Yep. And the nature of the man took over the sissy's behavior. Now the sissy want to fight. I'll fuck you and your ass. That was that the man. Crazy. That was the man yeah. talking. That wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> It was. Right. Come on, homie. It wasn't feminine. The nature yeah. of the man came out because DJ Academic spoke about the girls who the man here. Those are his girls, even though he a girl playing girl. They get drunk sometime. He put that dick in them. That man dick mm-hmm. still get hard. That should be happening. Them whole play with them whole play with them funks dick. That dick still get hard. And them hoes just want some dick when they get is, high and drunk. Is safe dick. Is, is punk a bad word? Uh, for he, the protection of yeah, yeah, yeah. I know he is, but I'm like, it's, I, I'm I'm sitting here really thinking about it. I'm like, damn, I said a punk a lot. <laughs> well, I'm getting niggas a way out when they talking about it and they want to use the yeah, term yeah, yeah. niggas say funk. And yeah, we, we got a new term since we making up terms. <laughs> because, you know, hey, listen, that's something that we firmly believe in. and something that we've done for a long time. Look, this is a business, right? You understand that you, like you gave us you gave us game when we first when you first came up here. Ever since we've been getting game from you. And for those that don't know, I be talking to Charleston all the time. You know, I he, call he gives me game all the time. <laughs> yeah, um, these my brothers in my mind. One, homie, once you once you bring this is why when a nigga cross me, I take it so personal because once I bring you into my home, once you bring me into your home. And I meet your son, I meet your right. sister, I meet your nephew, you meet my brother. Homie, we done bonded and connected because you wouldn't have had that opportunity. You would have done the interview and got out of here. Really? So once we do that, homie, there's a level of, of loyalty, respect, and admiration that I now have. Mm. So uh, it, it, it's beyond uh, just doing business. Oh, you brought me into your home, brother. Yeah. And so what I was Share getting meal, to you know, is yeah, for a drinks. long time, we kind of, I knew that it was going to be a process before I'm at full liberty to say whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. Because there's no chance uh-huh. that you could get to episode 10, start mouthing off, and then expect that you're going to get to episode 20. Chill out for a little <laughs> bit. Get everybody on the show. Be play nice and then talk your shit. Let them get to know you. And so, you know, lately we have been discussing that. We are a platform that really uh, loves to highlight that men are, it's still okay to be a man. Yeah. You don't have to be in a funk. Oh, listen. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Like, you could, it's okay to be a man. It's okay it don't, to be It don't okay to make like you gay to pee outside if you got to pee. You don't have to dance around at the door or the bathroom. It's okay to go behind the trash can and pee. Mm. It's okay if you at the gas pump and ain't nobody there. And, boy, you got to pee so bad to pull that dick out and pee. <laughs> Teach your little boy. 
<laughs> nigga, I tell, I used to tell my little boy, we be at the stop sign. Boy, get out and pee me, ho. Just throw side it at the door. <laughs> because men pee. We got the liberty of like any other animal, we can pull this thing out and pee anywhere else. Yeah. Stop shaming a man because he got to pee outside. Women nice sit down and pee outside on side to door. Uh, stop shaming a little boy for playing with his dick. It's seven, eight years yeah. old. That's how you explore and learn what that is. Yeah. As if we didn't all do that. Come on, homie. <laughs> uh, Come on. Because what, what ends up happening, that's what shamed the nigga to try to be a girl because he's been shamed in, in, in learning how to be a boy. Mm -hmm. They catch you in the bathroom with that dick hard. What you doing? And your mama whoop you and shame you. I remember I first got my first erection, homie. I went and woke my mama up with that little swollen motherfucker. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. Man, I thought something was wrong. Yeah, what the fuck is this? Man, when that motherfucker started tingling and that little white stuff was coming out of it. Uh, That's and, true, and, 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 hey, listen. And, and that motherfucker was burning. When I got back in the bed, because I've been in there playing with it with that soap, that soap got that pee hole burning. If it ain't no man to talk to about this, right? As a kid, homie, this was making these niggas become so prideful punks because they've been shamed with their boy traits to hide as a boy. Because it's shameful if your mama catch you with your penis hard masturbating. Because for one, she go treat you like you're a pervert and try to beat it out of you, shame it out of you. Because she's afraid of what may happen. You might be like the man that yeah. touched her, right? Mm. If daddy, like I caught my boy, Playing with that little bitty weenie. I said, Mijo, what you doing? He jumped. I saw him put his head down. So I saw naturally the shame yeah. coming. I said, no, nah, Mijo, it's all right. Shit, that's yours. Can't nobody tell you you can't touch that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. That's yours, nigga. But, it's a but, but this is man. what daddy told him. Such a difference. This yeah. is what daddy told him. But you don't want to be touching on that motherfucker all the time. It's all right, nigga. But yeah, any, that's yours, nigga. Can't nobody tell you, don't. Yeah. So no, because it's natural for a man to do that. It's just like brushing sure his is. teeth. Sure is. And it's frowned upon from women. You know what I mean? It's like, what the fuck is going on? So. Oh uh, well, well. You can't a uh, woman can't teach a man that no matter how much you think you can, a woman cannot teach a man. What I learned from the little girl. Uh, what I learned from uh, the grown women who've been whores who's open enough to talk about what little girls do. So that's why I like I like being around women. But, nigga, I like interacting with hoes because you get the truth about Just women fucking with hoes. Oh, yeah. Right? Women hide the secrets. Hoes reveal the secrets of a woman in truth in nature. Right? So, nigga, the hoes hip you to all little girls play with their pussy. They let the water run on it. Oh, they get in there and let the water drip down <laughs> on them all over. Stars. You don't know. We don't know it. We are dragging on the car. Come on now. So, uh, <laughs> no, man. All the girls experiment with lesbianism. They say. So, uh, that's true. Uh, well, because they naturally Philly kind of people. Little boys have to learn it. We are not naturally Philly. Little boys have to get a lot of hugs to learn how to hug, because we're not Ooh. wired to be Philly. We're not. Right. They got to learn how to hug, homie. How to be that? Because we're wired. Vulnerable. We're we're, ana we're analytics. Mm. We're not we're not emotional beings. So when you don't understand the two natures, homie, that's the problem with this shit. Motherfucking niggas in our relationships are fucked up because we're not trying to be better men. They not trying to be better women. We arguing about which one. They should be right. as if we're the experts in men on being women. <laughs> How many, sure. uh, man, I hate, not that I hated Kevin Sammer because I got a lot, I love my nigga. Mm -hmm. But nigga, granddad and them would say, hey, boy, get, why you over there talking to them women? Mm. And he boy, get your ass from over here. You can't, uh, you can't correct them. Yeah. You, you can't what, correct what, them. What you gonna tell them to change their mind? Like, you don't know what they feel when they get in their emotions and they're on their period. Mm -hmm. She don't know what you feel, nigga, when you're horny in that peace heart. She don't know what thoughts go through your mind. Well, she thinks she knows, but she different. can't have a clue. That's why I think it's so important that when you're raising your children that you at least try to make your best effort to have both parents present, even if you're not together. Because you can't teach everything. Nah. You know what I mean? The, the, nah. the woman could teach... The son, 
the things that he needs to learn about a woman and the man could teach the man how to be a man, right? And then vice versa, the, 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 the father could teach the daughter the things that she needs to know about how a, how a man should be and how a man should treat her, but he can't tell her how to be a woman and how to be a uh -uh. girl, and that's what you need the mom there for. And there's so often, like, the you don't idea know, of marriage You don't know to the tell idea. your daughter the white front to back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you don't know to tell that. <laughs> and it, it's, it's tough because... You know, what you said earlier is something I've been speaking about recently. I feel like too often now in relationships, yeah, the woman's trying to be the man. She is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially you have, you, listen, homie, uh, because of pop culture and media, you have at least two recent generations, I'm going to say at least 20 years, I'm going to say 30 years, of a group uh, that's us and our mothers. So you have a group who was programmed and brainwashed through media, right? So you got to think about our mothers, Nim, grew up with the soap opera, fantasy world, <laughs> watching the soaps. Novella. Mm -hmm. Watching the soaps. So when they cut that motherfucking TV out and they look at Jose, <laughs> Jose ain't nothing like Julio on there. Yeah. So they compare Jose to this. Yeah. And they start fucking with Jose because Jose don't bring roses in. But you don't, you know what they don't figure out quick? Is that Julio is a sissy. Come, hold on, <laughs> hold on. They acting, they selling you yeah, a dream. Exactly. Starters, they selling yeah. you an unrealistic dream. Uh, Julio been working. Julio trying to keep the, Jose trying to keep the lights on. Mm -hmm. uh, Jose trying to not to get drunk and kick your ass. But he getting drunk. You watching this fantasy world with your unrealistic expectations of a man based on what you've seen because you didn't see these uh, traits in a father. Mm -hmm. You didn't see them. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Most of us, so, so they looking for the unflawed man, right, that they see on television. Look. Jose getting up going to work every day. Jose making sure your car no paid. Jose making sure it's, it's tortillas in there. Mm -hmm. But Jose ain't, Ho Jose ain't noticing. Jose's a real Mexican. <laughs> Jose ain't noticing when you get your nails done. Word. Jose ain't noticing when you get your hair done. He said, do you like my hair, babe? Oh, yeah, I like it. Well, you didn't say nothing. Jose, mine ain't on you. No, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, can Talk we, to him. Can, well, well, can we, well, you, Please, well, 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 so, I deal with this often. You know what so, I'm saying? I'm not, a, you know, I don't sugarcoat my shit. Shit's out there. It's real so, life. so she watching you Julio know? take Maria on a date. Julio and Maria on television got date nights every Thursday and Saturday. When the television come out, she laying in bed saying, can we start going on date nights? Mm -hmm. Julio saying, car no paid, house paid, insurance paid. Uh, set a date night. Yeah. <laughs> set us a date night, babe. Yeah. I don't know how you to set a date okay. night. Yeah. I'm not a dater. I'm a provider. Mm. Uh, Salute to that. Right come there, on now. Right? Salute. Uh, so we're, we're being brainwashed. So now you got this new group. This new group says, I want to get back at the man. And how do I get back at the man? I'm going to do what he do. Trouble. So now this group says, I think like him. And now their actions are acting like him. That's why the hope is coming out of them. They yeah. used to hide it yep. because they didn't think like a man. A man let his hoe his ways and behavior show. The woman never did. Mm -hmm. It was a woman was in the streets and the freak in the sheets. You mm -hmm. never knew a woman. But now, homie. Because the woman is trying to take on the man's nature. Yeah. Women are more women are more masculine acting, and men are more feminine acting. Yeah. So because the women are more masculine acting, they emasculate their sons to take on the women traits that they see their mama doing outside of her acting masculine, because she still gotta yeah. sit down and pee. Mm. She still yeah. gotta put yeah. that tampon in her pussy no, when she bleeds. No, he's acting. Come on now, because she have to she have to emulate the traits. She can't take on the nature because you can emulate the traits in thought because your thought dictates your behavior. Okay. 
So that's why the man can begin to emulate a behavior in 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 in, in condition a thought pattern. Create him a thought pattern with the behavior, but it's not a thought pattern. It's, it's a happening. habit that he's creating. Yeah, yeah. He ain't rewiring his brain. He can't tap into that side of his brain. He don't have the power to. So what he has to do is he has to eat, eat, emulate these traits. Emulate these traits and reprocess his thoughts. But he can't tap into that, my nigga. He just got to mimic he got to mimic actions, homie, and the actions have to try to, the thought ain't real. It's just not. The thoughts are not real, homie. That's why they had I was born. Those thoughts ain't real, my nigga. Can I say something? Are, are yeah, we, yeah. I look at the camera. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if you hear the conversations. We had Charleston White up here three times. Trey. And we ain't never talked about that. We never had to go crazy. It was it, like even when the Britney Renner situation happened, and inside of here, it was peace. It was good. Mm -hmm. You know, outside in the media, they're like, oh, For this is happening. Two hours. Hours. <laughs> yeah. We've offered some of you to come up here to have a conversation with Charleston White. And I feel like it would be a phenomenal conversation, but for whatever reason, they don't feel comfortable with it. Um, I. I do want to highlight this one because it did bother me. Um, I, I offered uh, Dr. Umar a chance to sit down and have a conversation with you. I was excited about that, too. That was going to be cool. I was super excited. I was, I was super excited about that. And Real cool. Decline. Flat out. Not interested in that conversation. Yeah. And it's not, I'm not bashing him. I, I don't understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Why I, do you I, feel like these people are afraid to have a conversation uh, with you? Uh, because because they, they've heard me speak. Uh, and, and any intelligent person, if they hear me speak, uh, they see the level of, of, of intelligence uh, that I have. Yeah. Uh, I'm playing a fool. Uh, so these are very intelligent people who who, who you invited, and 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 they are afraid that. Uh, I wouldn't say they're afraid. Uh, it's something about two vipers. You hardly ever see two vipers get in the pit. These today men aren't vipers. And, and what do you mean by that, Charleston? Uh, that's why Muhammad Ali fought Frazier, two vipers. That's why Muhammad Ali fought uh, Ken Norton. That's why Muhammad Ali fought uh, George fear. Foreman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, be, be, because two yeah. vipers. But what ends up happening is when you put two vipers in a pit, Somebody got to... One of them gets yeah. dethroned. Yeah. And one of them have to leave the village or the wilderness <laughs> or the jungle and walk away like yeah. the silverback gorilla and can't hang with the group no more. Yeah, that's true. And so they 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 avoid that. Shy from that, yeah. Uh, I don't... Brand. Uh, uh, I, I don't have an image. I don't have a degree uh, to, to try to hold on to. I have real community actions and I have truth that I stand on. Mm -hmm. They scared of that. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You don't want to intimidate. Put, you don't want to put a PhD up against that. You know, nah, what I'm nah, nah. Oh. now we're live. We do this shit live. You got to yeah, take yeah, the yeah, phone. Yeah, take shit. that phone. You feel me? Um, yo, yeah. while while he takes a phone call, real quick again, oh, I like to stress to uh, these people all the time. Yeah, you go go right out here this way. Yeah, um, I like to stress to everybody all the time. This is live. There's there's no sugar coating shit. We mm -hmm. actually can see you. I can see your comments right now. I see you talking over here, Mace. Yeah. I see the real A and R, Sale Ra, the real Buddha, Yo. the knowledge God, Yo. Low Seven, Ger Gerard, Yo. Yo. Emmanuel, everybody that's in here. I'm 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 reading along. I see what you're talking. That's I even see when good. the people be talking shit about me. It's okay. You know what I mean? I love it. <laughs> we like that uh, too. Somebody I saw somebody say, Who who makes a poll about the like button? Did they hit the like button? Did y'all hit like? <laughs> we do, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. If you can, take a second real quick to, to hit the share button. I appreciate all the comments. And also, if you want, if you know, we definitely uh, ask the questions. If anybody does a um, super chat, super chat, we definitely ask the question for you. Um, also, there we have the, you know, we got levels to the subscriptions and the members. A level three member, shit, if there's level three members in the room, we could, we could jump on a call after the show. 
um, with Charleston White there with you. You know what I mean? Listening to you, talking, you're talking his shit. You could talk his shit. That's all. I like mm-hmm. to be able to do something a little bit different where we allow the fans to connect with the people that they sit there and they watch online. Because I know y'all want to ask him questions. You know what I mean? That's what I'm here doing. You Don't know what be I'm shy, saying? motherfucker. It's, it's just we bring, we bring people to the room to have dope-ass conversations, and I feel like that's uh, something that, you know, it's, a, it's another bridge. You know how we ended up getting the internet? Right. I was just talking to my girl about this the other day. I was like, you know what? I ain't, I had AOL and Messenger as my first joint. And I had that at, like, I think, like, 15 or 16 years old. And then, I like, MySpace was when I was already in fucking, in high school and shit. It was good. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in. Come on in. It was good. So, so MySpace was already, like, for me, was like a fucking... I was already in goddamn high school when I was on that shit. So... I, I like the opportunity, really, to bridge a gap between the people that are sitting here watching right now and Charleston White. You know what I mean? That's what the Danza Project is about, so we definitely see what y'all are talking about. Hit that subscribe mm-hmm. button. Hit that share button. Uh, the my hit space, that like the, button. The MySpace generation is ruling right now mm. uh, because they tapped into the technology world uh, when technology conquered humanity. Uh, when, when we was introduced to the Internet, uh, they never... They didn't know that it would conquer humanity. Uh, it, it was like discovering oil. You know what I'm saying? So everybody was happy and excited. Uh, it, it connected the world. Yep. And then uh, the millennials were being born. And then here come platforms like MySpace. Uh, those kids, uh, Say TV was birthed for MySpace. Mm-hmm. So 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 when you look at so so when you look at all the these young people that that seem to have conquered YouTube, they grew up with it. Yeah, last uh, of the Mohicans, really. Yeah, homie. Uh, even like, Vlad, homie. Uh, yep. they they he grew up with YouTube. It's crazy. So so they understood monetization, man. When we were struggling trying to get a good paying job. Mm. By the way, shout out Vlad TV. He'll be here Wednesday night. Hello, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So uh, so uh. Charleston was one of the first dudes that gave us flowers that told us we were going to blow up. I t- you know I what I mean? We had a fact. couple times, but Charleston definitely sat us down and was like, y'all, y'all got to listen. Yeah. I had him to talk to y'all. <laughs> well, well, man, because because uh, I, I, stu- I study and I look, and, and I saw how y'all was engaging me uh, and, and, and not taking me to the to the internet topics. And and from, from my 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 qualitative experiences is people who do that flourish more in 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 on platforms like Revolt, the Breakfast Club. Uh once you get there, then you can start talking about these these uh, uh viral titles. The, but but the when you but, but 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 <laughs> when you start out, what what ends up happening, it, it makes you non advertiser friendly. Yeah. Right? Because it, it, it draws a, a different kind of audience. So if you can get Charleston or, or, or Brandon Marshall or or, or any, any... Or any, Bootleg Kev or Vlad TV yeah, or, 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 or Fat or, or, Joe or Boosie. Or even Boosie, you know what, you know what I'm mean? saying? Like, you, yeah, and and yeah, you Boosie. can get them here and, and you can talk to them and you get to see their charisma, you get to see their intelligence, you get to see their humor. Yep. That's the side that the fans want to see outside the videos and the music. Yeah. There's that's you can't find that nowhere that behind else. the scenes that real yeah cut. so so homie when I sat down with y'all my first time I compared y'all to Fab Five Freddy on Yo MTV Raps mm. uh, I compared y'all to Tigger in the basement uh, because okay. because y'all brought out the man uh, y'all awesome. highlight a, a, a story y'all had a backstory uh, that was presented by the kind of questions y'all asked right. uh, and, and then y'all not hotheads. <laughs> uh, the Joe Budden. Oh, we can't be, but you know. Uh, but but uh, uh, but 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 y'all are professional hotheads. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's been it, it's been tested and, and it's been shown. So so anybody who's been doing this for a while, uh, and, and can spot talent and, and can recognize talent can easily see that that, that you guys are, are, are the new fresh great talent uh, that have embarked into the podcast world. Appreciate that, Appreciate man. That. And you know, like, again, uh, as I was telling you earlier, and I've been trying to explain to them, I want y'all to sit in a room and look at it this way when you're having a conversation. If you're listening to this, 
through Spotify or Apple Podcasts, or if you're watching this, I want you to look at it this way. We're at a dope-ass lounge. Me and Chris are just kicking it. We're having a few <laughs> drinks, talking about how much, you know, life pisses us off, women piss us off, and this money's hard to get to, but we're getting it anyways, and we're killing it anyways. Yep. And then all of a sudden, somebody walks up. is like, yo, I'm here with Charleston White. Charles and White walks in the room and we sit there and we have a conversation with him. We didn't we didn't Ooh. run to the phone and say, um, oh, well, uh, what, yo, I see on YouTube they're saying this about you and I seen on Instagram you're, you're viral about this. Nah, we're sitting and we're saying, how are you? Nice to meet you. Yeah. yeah like, you know what I mean? Like, how you doing? Mm-hmm. How you feeling? How's life? You know what I'm saying? What's, yeah. what's going on with the world right now? That's, that's, what, that's what you're walking into. If you're listening to this right now, that's what you just walked into. Uh, I, I think I think the stars and the celebrities want to come on platforms uh, where they can be regular people, mm-hmm. and they don't have to put on. Yep. Uh, that's it's, it, it's a burden to play. It, it's a burden to be a wrestler all the time, and wrestling ain't real. Uh, it, it's a burden if you're an R and B singer and you make great music and you sing love songs, but you're really an abusive dude. Trey yeah. Song struggling. Trey, he's struggling with that. These guys struggle with that, homie, because we we all have flaws. But it's no different than the CEO, the lawyer, the judge, who secretly buys pussy. Yeah, we can't worry. You, you see what I'm saying? It, it, yeah, it's so no. It, 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 we it's all got there. a flaw. But what ends up happening, homie? Uh, you, your demons, your vices, your flaws, your mistakes. Your failures and your insecurity, they hide behind the title judge. That's facade. They hide behind the title CEO. So if you you can hide, you can't hide from who you are, yeah. but people try to, right? So I'm saying, man, uh Yeah, no, it's it's it's, it's nice when they get to come up here and like yeah, say, beat, yeah, them, beat themselves. Man, yeah, man, listen, homie. A lot of people compliment. I watched that, that nigga. I watched that nigga Boosie look like he had fun with y'all. Yeah, uh, he, he was real calm. Fun. Nigga, he don't. He don't. <laughs> but but on Vlad, he got to put on. He got to stick. No, but nigga, y'all made him look like a regular man. Yeah, yeah. A father, yep. a uncle, homie. Y'all humanized a, a guy that was once, uh, was being tried for murder. Y'all made him look like a human. Y'all made him look like he could be anybody's next door neighbor. What's crazy? And you know what's, what it is? I don't, go ahead. Go I was ahead. gonna say what's crazy about that because it's true and it's it's a task to be appreciated because it's easy to go for the low hanging fruit. Yeah, it's easy to say, tell us about this Rico charge and tell us about when this happened and it, and all all the spicy shit. Yeah. It's a lot harder for us to have real genuine conversation and get to know the person behind the mask and. You know, not well, that's go what, for the easy clickbait stuff. Well, that's gotcha, what gotcha. Uh, that that's what happened uh, in, in, in the Britney Renner situation. Uh, you guys, we were having regular conversation as if we was at the <laughs> bar, and Britney walked up and he <laughs> said, "You know, I ain't like you at first. <laughs> she never got yeah, past that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she never got past that." And I was trying to be a hundred, you know what I'm well, saying? Well, 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 we keeping it real, yeah, we, we, yeah, nigga. I yeah. Like you. Yeah, I was like, and, God, and so, man. and so then, uh, you we ain't br- like me, motherfucker. And then we brought up the fact that this nigga just got forty million with the new bra. Mm-hmm. We that that was the trigger. No, that was that good. was that trigger right there. Hell yeah, it was. I watched it again just yeah. today. So, 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 at that point, <laughs> it became about y'all. Uh. She, she already wrote us off. All oh, these niggas don't really uh, fuck with And you me. know what the truth was? Is is my intention behind it was sincere. I just... She I'm let trying to let it. people know that. She's just like every other woman. Yeah. She wouldn't let you explain that. She and, heard, that, that you worked past that and yeah. you saw some traits in her yeah. that made you start to respect her. Exactly. She got stuck on the fact that you didn't like the traits at first. Mm-hmm. That's all she heard. Because the trait still remains. See, yeah, if you don't grew past the traits. Hit, so when people tell me, nah, man, I ain't like you at first, homie, but I start listening because what you didn't like is not here. It exactly. wasn't there Somebody then. else painted a picture of you online and they post it a million times and a million people see it and they're like, oh, this is who they are. But then you chill out. It's like, wait, this was just one post. Let me just say this, homie. My, girl, and made uh, it my, my, my little way. mama finna get mad at me, homie. Uh, but it's two women who I swear up and down is straight up hoes I can't stand. And it was Sukiana and, and, and Sexy Red. <laughs> but I was just in a movie with Sukiana. Okay. And, and, and I sat back and I watched her 
and 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 in the short time I was around her, I I studied her actions and her her, her mannerisms. Uh, mm -hmm. That's probably one of the most respectful young ladies I have seen in a long time. Oh, uh, okay. It's fucked up that I... Is it fucked up that I got that sense from her? I feel like she was just like a genuine cool chick. Homie, her. she's so respectful and mannerable. Her mannerisms. Crazy. Uh, her voice tone. Uh, she seems... Compa she got a compassionate-like spirit. Uh, because, man, there were some people who didn't want me in the movie, right? Because the, the industry hadn't embraced me yet, right? Uh, but there are some people in the industry uh, who've done their research, uh, and they said, man, the guy really is not what we think. So Come they on. put me in this movie, right? Uh, me and Sukiyana came up to me probably, what, third, fourth day filming, and she was saying, uh, man, we all were so happy that that, that you was going to be in the movie. That's fine. Homie, that <laughs> nigga, I ain't, ne I ain't never like felt love, homie. Yeah. So, so she don't know I've been studying just watching her, trying mm -hmm. to see if she really, her mannerisms. Homie, listen. I, I fuck with hoes. I know hoes. Nigga, I, I, I grew up around women and ladies, but I had an uncle who was a pimp that kept me around hoes, and they I, they loved them, so keep, I, keep I got a, so I love hoes. I know how to, I'm like Jesus. I know how to fuck with a hoe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I, so, 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 I, I, I know whole mannerisms. <laughs> I know whole behavior, mm -hmm. and I know how to look at it. And, and what, what she's singing and rapping, that spirit don't reside in her. I got to see it up close and personal. So now, nah, so what you saying is, uh, yeah, homie, I was wrong about her. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, yeah, and I won't apologize to Sookie. And I ain't saying shit about Sexy Red. I ain't <laughs> yeah, I was, I was yeah, like, wait, what, were you yeah, wrong yeah. about Sexy Red? No, nah, hell no. Nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hell no. Nah. I won't apologize to Miss Sukiyana. That's fire. That's fire. It's good y'all got to meet. Y'all got to link. Yeah, homie. Because she probably checked you out. That's why it took three days. Make sure uh, what's up with the movie? Oh uh, well, homie. Uh, see, I wasn't on the set, so 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 so. If you see in the movie, I came in toward the end. Okay. So they had already been filming. Okay. Uh, I, I came in toward the end of the movie, but it was still like two two day two or three days uh, 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 of my filming, so. and it was long. Man, that shit hard work, homie. That's all yeah. I'm gonna say. Man, shooting the movie hard. It Is that easy. your first like? Oh, uh, that's my first. That's my first real film. I think you got some more to come too, though. Well, uh, when I leave you guys, uh, I'm shooting a movie. I, I don't know if I can say it, but I'm shooting a movie with uh, me, Amaretta, and, oh, fine, and, and, oh, and, and and I think Saucy might be in it. I'm, I'm not. Oh, I, right. I, I can't listen. <laughs> when, 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 when we done our reading, uh, there was a there was a there was a uh, there was a gay what? black. There was a gay. There, there was a gay <laughs> black male. Got me lost. When when we all introduced ourselves. Uh, he introduced this, and the reason I don't remember the name, because uh, he specifically highlighted, and I'm a gay black male. <laughs> Wait, so how did this? Well, we're, we're, we're was doing, it through a phone? Oh, uh, well, we're all we're all, on, we're, we're all on, we're all on, we're all on a video chat, okay, okay. Uh, doing doing cool. doing doing our line readings for yeah. for the movie scene, right? To make sure we're. Re re Remember on the lines mm -hmm. and, and all Check that the shit. Time Yo, is. Charles yeah. and White and Saucy Santana. Oh uh, no, no, no. So, so this, so, so don't, I don't correct, don't, don't, don't say that. I'm just saying, like, it's I, just I, a mad. I'm just saying, there's a, there's a, there's a gay black male that's in the movie. I, I, I the voice was real flamboyant. It sounds like it. So I can't Ooh. remember the name. Ooh, okay. But it's, it's, it's a movie about uh, Atlanta's freak Nick, right? Oh, in, in the early '90s, and, and, and I forgot. Uh, it's about the freak Nick. And, and, and I play I play the character of, of, of a role by the name of a guy by the name of Black, uh, gangster nigga, killer nigga with goals in his mouth, and he hate and he hate funks, he hate homosexuals. <laughs> oh, Lord. Because, right, we got but, enough. We got uh, enough. Don't give, well, don't give it all to no, no, well, well, uh, uh, well, because it's the freak Nick era, right? Yeah, 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 so yeah. there was a time you, you have to think gays migrated. There, there, there was a great migration to Atlanta of homosexuals. Migration. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, it just came. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, so, Fish. so, Yo, so chill out. That should be my Yeah, y'all boys, my So, so, I want, I want to say this, homie, because I'm gonna go film this movie. So, I, I so, I, I'm not hateful, right? Even though, I'm even about, though, even though, even though, even though I disagree, disagree with the homosexual What's lifestyle, this? I'm not hateful, right? Oh, oh shit! But my character hates gays, right? Was right. Shit was still so, cool. so black hates. Walk that so, there. so black hates gays, and in the movie. In these characters, you have to tap. That's why they call acting witchcraft, homie, because you have to tap you gotta into it. You got to channel it. You have to channel this. Yep. So, when, when, so, so, 
this character is, he upset because you got all these fine bitches around here, but now gays are now starting to come to Atlanta. They got gay clubs. So he mad about Atlanta changing into gays, and it's the freak nick. So he don't give a damn about the freak nick. Uh, he finna start killing and shooting the gays. Oh, shit. Uh, so I have to tap into, into that nature and into that character. Yeah. And, and, and what I learned, homie, that is that uh, as much as I disagree with it, I don't hate it, and I don't hate them because I, I couldn't mm. tap into I couldn't channel it. Yeah, during during I the reading, see, I see. But so so. But I, just so you know, the headline will be Charles and White kills gays. Oh, uh, you well, know what I mean? Uh, like, what what, what that's, it, that's it, what the a, highlight will be. That's a, what they try to make uh, it about it. What, what it, it's great production, so it, it won't be. So it, the movie, uh, it, it's a real big, big movie and film. Uh, so that's that's where that's where your acting coaches come in. Mm. So so just think about the, the the guys who have to play the role that they molesting the kid. Yeah. Uh, think about the guys who who have to play the role as if they get raped in prison. Uh, the facial expressions. Uh, you have to go. What? You gotta fuck? go there. You gotta. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta go, go, there. go there, homie. To really sell it, it on homie, camera. It, and you it, gotta... Now, now, if, if you if, if you don't want to go there, then you go on Tubi. <laughs> but if you want to get in the real yeah, acting, yeah, homie, it's true, true. Yeah, Shout nigga. Out to Tubi. So that's why. You know it's that. So that's why in some movies they got to do some real fucking. Yeah. Yep. Nigga, that white boy got to fuck uh, a Holly Berry in that film. She uh, won that Oscar in Monster, Monster Ball. Ball. Monster Ball. He got to get in that put yeah, because it. because if you want, yo, if could you, you imagine the sign up sheet for it though? Yes. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, you know what I mean? Signature. Yes. Uh, well, she's the co-star. He was the main star. She had to right. submit. He didn't. Yeah, he, I know. He, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying he was happy. Well, let me just say this. Uh, uh, he get to pick who he want to fuck in this movie. When you that big. When you Brad Pitt and, and, and you uh what's that other motherfucker name uh that prayed uh, to uh, Tom Cruise uh, no nah, on the Titanic the other one Leonardo, oh, Leonardo. DiCaprio yeah, yeah yeah you get to pick who you get to fucking kiss on in these movies <laughs> because because naturally y'all are gonna shoot this film for six to nine months and those are and the ultimate pimps right come on man them joints out. Make it real. Look real. Well, right, let me get her let me get her oh uh, well it, the movie producer is the ultimate pimp not the actor word. Cause Absolutely. he get to fuck both of them if he want to. The movie producer, yes. <laughs> that's facts. The actor's just a talent. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. It's the Harvey Weinstein. Uh, that's why Weinstein. I said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, now Harvey gonna invite you to the office, nigga. He in the shower, naked, jacking off while y'all reading the movie scene. <laughs> yeah. He was a motherfucker. I didn't expect you so soon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but this what I learned, homie. Uh, uh, that shit is hard work, mm -hmm. and, and, and and it's pressure on those people. And 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 it's hard to it's hard to maintain this light. And and and, and it's hard to maintain your sanity, uh, your morals, yeah. with a sober mind. Right. How how long do you have to prep for these roles? Because uh, however long that prep is could be detrimental in the sense that you gotta uh, channel that character. Uh, well, for 30, 60, 90 days. Yeah, man, well, some, some people film for six to nine months, homie. And so, yep. nigga, uh, what, what ends up happening is, uh, while you're challenging that, some of these traits are, are displayed in your behavior with your woman at home. Mm. With your I home, always, with, with your homeboy, with yeah, your yeah. homeboys at the bar, at the car wash. Start, uh, yeah. you, you can't play Dunny Brasco for nine months and then turn it off because you have to go be around gangsters. You talk to this person. You learn yeah. about this. So you learn so much to try to take on the, what you think the yeah, nature is. You're almost of, naturally adapting that behavior. Uh, you're, you're becoming possessed. Yeah, yeah. The perfect example, unfortunately, and fortunately for us, I guess, was Heath Ledger, right? Yeah. Joker? Uh, well, that's why, that's, why, that's why the religious world say that acting and, and all of this is a form of witchcraft and you have to take on, you have, you, it's like you're being possessed. possessed. Who was it? Wasn't it like Jim Carrey that had a, a big problem with that? I'm sure. Yeah. Because he's done some out there movies. Yeah, they, like he Truman said like he can't even leave the character. Uh, well, you, I think, you, I'm pretty sure uh, if you look at his Jim Carrey, he did some wild well, shit. Well, well, that's, that's why you guys are good for rappers because you, you, you allow them to leave the characters. Yeah. Uh, that's that's why I wanted to be a comedian. Uh, that's why I wanted to get in, into movies, because I didn't want to get stuck into the character. Yeah. I, this is just th even though the internet is not a television, I'm on television by way of the internet because you're gonna put yeah. me on TV. So I'm on television, and I'm acting. Uh, 
Charleston White regular life is not content. I see. Yeah, my regular life is not content. Yeah, you still, you to, still gotta live. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna have to do got, some laundry. Yeah, here nigga, yeah. <laughs> but when I get on the internet, I have to create content. Right. Right? So if you don't create a character to create content, then where are you getting your content from? You're interviewing people. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to interview people. I got I, I went viral online. So uh Charleston went viral online playing like he had called the police on somebody. So tomorrow I got to play again. Yep. Mm. Tomorrow I got to play again. Yep. That wasn't Charleston. I was playing. Nigga. And, and I saw it work. And so, but what ended up happening is, in real life, the internet person supersedes the real Charleston. Yeah, Charleston, so now, yeah. Because it's, it's, so, it's so sensationalized online. They don't give a damn about the community activist Charleston. You said this. They don't give a damn about you ain't never killed nobody. You said this. Do you think there'll ever be a point where you you, you kind of just say, God damn, I'm tired of this. Hell no. I'm tired when, of when I stop, uh, I ain't uh, When I stop making the money, but I ain't catching flat. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, ain't, I ain't caught no flat. The, re- uh, the reason why I asked that, I, I, I worked at the Improv Comedy Club for years. We yeah. talked about that last time. And um, what's the guy? Uh, Paulie Shore. Yeah. Paulie Shore does a movie. He does a character where he's this stoned out surfer and now 30 plus years since he probably did that movie he's every time people see him they want to see that guy so he has to pretend to be the mind-blown surfer character uh, so he kind of resents it you know what i'm saying from having to portray that character totally so yeah yeah, oh, dude. Dude. yeah bro oh uh, uh, you know what the, somebody that's, just said that's, something that's dope in the comments they said the the guy that shot ricky in the movie ended up catching the body Ricky. Uh, it, it is uh, though, like you really well, have to be that, that character and, and, sometimes. And, and, but that's what's happening to our rappers. We force them to stay in character because we start saying, "Oh, you got a ghostwriter." We start shaming our rappers for having yeah. ghostwriters. You ain't really kill nobody. You ain't never been to jail. Oh, you, you come from the suburbs. Jail. We start shaming them for not doing the things that they was theatrically yeah. rapping about. Mm-hmm. Right. Because it ain't Tupac. too many Griseldas. Tupac you know I mean? did that to us, homie. Tupac was a very intelligent, educated kid that was taught right from wrong. Still. He didn't really sell drugs. He wasn't no street guy. But when he got with what he was fascinated with, he got stuck in that character, thug life. Mm. Thug life. He wasn't no thug, but he came up with a hell of an acronym, the hate. You gave little infants fucks everybody. But because he was rapping this thug shit, he got caught up into what he was rapping. Now he's screaming M-O-B. Wait, time out. So the hate you give? T-H-U-G. The hate you give. The hate you give. Wow. I didn't know that. Did it, did the hate that? you give little Y'all infants fucks yeah. everybody. <laughs> That's so, yeah, homie. Listen, yeah, so that's why you hear me. That's my favorite so, motherfucking rapper. So that's why mine, mine too. So that's why you hear me use a lot of acronyms. I learned that mm-hmm. from a kid that's Tupac. Never ignorant, getting goals accomplished. G A M E. Game applied means elevation. G A M E. Guidance above my emotions. Proper instructions motivate people. P I M P. P I M. Yeah. <laughs> Put it in my poem. I learned to teach like that because mm. Pac taught me like that. That's how mm. it resonates. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. Hi, <laughs> helping young people excel. So I learned to use acronyms listening to Pac, homie. Thug like. So, but what happened was when he got with a group of gangsters talking thug, now he got, he got stuck on stage playing his character. And that's what's happening to a, a lot of the niggas that's playing gangster. Nigga, you might get stuck on stage with a life sentence playing gangster. Mm. Shit. And you can't exit. You trapped in this character you gotta, now. You got to keep now the show you, going. Now you got to go down there and really yeah. stand on it now, nigga. Because out here you really playing. And it's harder to talk peace amongst individuals. It's harder to mend the, the, the issues between... Tupac and Biggie. Oh uh, well, you once still you gotta keep your image up. You I was once you, you start know. playing this character, yeah. 
Cannot have been. Once you step in, once you put this jacket on and you say, I'm going to wear this gangster jacket, and you ain't and you're not a studio gangster, you can't take it off. And keep you can't. You know who they talk about that? They say that about Jeezy. And not about the gangster shit, but about like the dope selling shit. Yeah, like, hold on, bro. You've been off out the streets for about 20 years. If he take it off, what he go rap about? But see. His fans looking for his fan, and, and nigga, they he don't have to hey, do that kind of go back and listen to Jay Z's last song he done put out. He's still talking about it. He can't talk about nothing else. Jay-Z, go listen to Jay-Z, last five years of recent song, he's still letting us know he used to sell dope. He used to sell dope. And he a mo- so he's still bringing it up. Yep. Stuck on stage. Damn. That's the fear. Because then you got to be that person for years on years. Stuck like on Hulk stage. Hogan don't get to show up and not be Hulk Hogan. Uh, you know, that's why I was asking Char- you. Char- like, uh, you, uh, you know. uh, Charleston White don't get to show up and not be Charleston White because what yeah. they start asking is, all don't get quiet now. Yeah. And I'm saying, man, but I'm really quiet in real life. But I still went to the airport and I was like, blue! Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Because we know a different side of child yeah. shit right over at the dance party. Yeah, so blue. so so I, I I don't go places where people expect the internet guy, because they expect the internet guy. Sure. Uh I had to learn the difference between people who was interviewing me and who they was looking for. And and I had to learn that by the type of question they asked me. So it's a lot of people don't want to hear shit from Charleston. They want that internet nigga. So they stick, mm. they keep me boxed in with what I've said on the internet. Yeah. They don't want to know nothing outside the internet. And those are, and, and, and that's probably 80% of platforms. That's a short conversation if you ask me. Well, you know uh, uh, that, like, uh, uh, that's why, that's why they don't reap the rewards that you guys reap from doing interviews. I see. You guys reap good reward bringing this Charleston out. Word. It taps into a whole nother audience, nigga, and a whole nother demographics yeah. that's been ignoring, ignoring. Cause man, people don't want to hear foolish shit, mm. nigga. Only fools want to hear the foolish shit, and that's why I give it to. Too many motherfucking fools out there. That's true too. But it's more normal people that just thinking logically than it is. The fools don't out don't they don't they don't outnumber yeah. us, homie. You don't think so? I I, I don't believe I so. Think you know how I, I know look this at is, TikTok is fools. You know how I know <laughs> it's true because I I'm, I see his comment section and the amount sure. of people that I see say. Y'all keep playing, but Charleston speaking. Y'all keep playing. This man's smart. Y'all keep playing. This man educated. Yeah. Uh, because There's a be, lot more of that. Uh, because if if it was more fools, uh, I couldn't have lasted this long. Mm. The True. fools want me gone. Yep. Shut up, kill yeah, him. They, they triggered. Yeah. What? <laughs> I, I wouldn't have been able. I, I wouldn't have been able to ride. <laughs> but because I, I I'm so uh, outlandish uh, with my presentations, uh. I turn off the logics, the rationale run away because I'm talking foolish. So it's platform like these <laughs> that they run across and say, man, what? I thought that nigga was a fool. <laughs> so this where, yeah. this is where we get them at over here because over there I'm a fool. Right. Nigga, they don't get this nowhere else. <laughs> so I saw I you speaking it. on, you know, speaking about fools. Yeah. I saw you speaking on recently about how, you know, a, a situation happens. Nobody reaches out to you ever, but then all of a sudden something happens. Ain't nobody wishing you yeah. well or hoping you're good. Oh, you okay? It's yeah. more or less like, tell us a story. Tell us how, how everything happened. Uh, yeah. um, is it difficult having people always size you up as a character instead of a human? Uh, no, that, that, uh, that. That's how I protect me. That that the character protects Charleston because he stands in the middle of Charleston. If I bring me to y'all, then they're gonna crucify me. Do you see what they're doing to Will Smith? And he's he he's he's a quiet man. He's not speaking ill against his wife, but because his wife is showing her flaws, you see how they doing him. Bad. They don't have a character. He don't have a character out there. Uh, I got a character that protects Charleston. Mm-hmm. Nigga, they get stuck on the character, so they don't even try. They don't even say fuck Charleston. Because if you got the Charleston, you see, man, uh, he just talking. Nobody can say I've done anything. The character is just talking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Charleston but then, but then ain't done you do nothing. Have, like I feel like 
Charleston ain't snitched on nobody. Charleston ain't got no paperwork, but the character talks like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But when the story is that you got pissed or whipped and you got beat up, I don't think it's shitty to know that more people aren't saying, hey, you okay? Uh, and more people are just sitting there and asking what happened. Uh, like nobody wants to know, hey, yo, is are you okay? Are you good? It's well, like, this is this is what I'm telling people. Don't call and ask me okay. Because I done already told y'all, if a motherfucker don't went live at the hospital, they okay. Mm. People that's dying don't go live. People that really got Word. beat up and that's hurt and pistol whooped, they, <laughs> they, they, they spirit won't allow them to let y'all see them like that. If a motherfucker going live, they doing it for clout or something. 100%. You got real life to worry about, and you want to go live. Come on now, so think oh, about this. awareness. So, 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 you know so, I mean? so, uh-huh. so, so, think about this. Yeah, an incident happened, but it wasn't what the internet think it is. Yeah, yeah. I'm sitting right here before y'all, homie. Yeah, next day I see you. Nigga hit me. <laughs> nigga, nigga hit me in the head with a pistol, but I done been hit in the head with a gun before. Yeah. I done hit niggas in the head with a gun before, <laughs> and the nigga that hit me in the head with a gun is a killer. Big bad nigga who run the town, scared of the town, king paying nigga. Word. But he a child molester and a snitch. In his documentations, there's a historical drug bust in our town called The Life of the Fishbowl. It's a book about this guy. He the snitch that brought the FBI to bring all his full trade gangster crips down, and he was the leader. Word. But but since he's a killer and can't nobody whoop him, won't nobody speak on it. It's the same in your hood and in everybody else's hood. See, the nigga that a kill and can fight in this gangster, he get to go to prison and fuck a nigga and won't nobody say he fuck nobody. He get to molest children. He get to molest. He get to fuck the sixteen year old girls, the seventeen, and, it, and his homeboy won't say, say nothing. Shit. He get to beat up his woman, and his homeboy won't speak on it. They'll whisper behind his back. I'm the nigga that speak on it. Mm. Right. See, I'm playing snitch. Ain't no paperwork on me. So I sat back and watched. I said, man, mm. won't nobody say nothing in the streets? They still hitting his C's and hitting his G's? The streets is a hypocrite. They pick and choose who they apply they these rules really. to. Mm, facts. They pick and choose, my nigga. Facts. Based on fear? Based on fear. Nobody that's why, that. listen, yeah. that's why you never hear about the OG's who raped and fuck the boys in prison. They'll tell you about the nigga that's weak and fuck the boy. They'll tell you about the nigga that's weak and got raped, but they never talk about the killers who do it. And nobody does it more than the killing niggas, the gangster niggas. So this nigga here that hit me with the pistol, we've been crossing paths for a while. He been telling me I can't speak on the fact that he snitched. Won't nobody speak on it but me. And I say it publicly. So we done bumped heads before. I always said, nigga, one nigga can't get me by himself. They go have to get more than one nigga. Can't no nigga get me coming directly at me. He got to get me from behind there. And that's what happened. But you looking at me now, don't you? Mm-hmm. I ain't oh. never. I've been, nigga, I've been hit, but I ain't never been hurt. Uh, I took one blow and woke up and stood up. And he stands 6'2", 6'3", 230, And I ain't take no more blows. I went in the ambulance and went live because I'm going to sue the barbershop. I went live with a Band-Aid. Nigga, I'm going to sue the nigga, but I'm also going to press charges too. You feel like you were set up in that instance? Uh, I know I was. Okay. Because because I don't go to barbershops. Yeah, we all know how. I, listen, 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 I don't go to barbershop. I got a I got a celebrity bar. I got Kendrick Lamar's former barber, nigga. His call his name is Popular Nobody. He's the director of Paul Mitchell Barber College. He's the guru in the heritage. That's my barber. Okay. But an associate asked for a shirt. And I thought to myself, I said, nigga, these niggas ain't never wanted to wear my shirts before. Why this nigga want a shirt? So I already got the red flags. But my brother just come home from prison. These my brother homeboys. And I've been telling this nigga, nigga, your homeboys is the niggas I've been getting into it with. Mm. But he he don't know. He lame. He ain't been around. So right. Big Broden graduated from Barber College. He want to go cut in the hood. 
I don't want to kill his dream. Come on, my nigga. No, nah, nigga, by you going to the hood, you get these niggas action at me. Because I'm going to come stop and fuck with, fuck you. with you. Now they got the drop people. on me, nigga. Damn. But I don't want to kill. That's simple. Bro, I don't want to kill bro dream. But goddamn, nigga, fuck it now. Yeah. But okay. Yeah. So I'm, now they I, got. I, I fuck with you, so I'm going to. Man, I'm a listen, listen homie. <laughs> and I fuck with the nigga who cut my hair, used to cut my hair. That no longer cut my hair. It's supposed to be a good spot for you. It's there you go. Supposed to be a safe space. Come on now, come on now. So it's a safe space for me. And they but, know that. And but but the nigga who cut my hair, it's another barber shop on the corner. He know my enemy. Get his hair cut down there. So say man, such and such. There you go. Down there on Thursday. There so, you uh, there you go. Say so if so. You feel like stopping? By. So the play was, hey man, see if your brother bring me some shirts or if I want to buy some of them shirts. Oh, man, he ain't got to buy none, my nigga. I'm going to bring him some of them hoodies and all that shit. I'm, yeah. So I bring the shirts up there. Uh, I don't go to barbershops. And, and, and I don't sit nowhere alone. So, so nobody knows my movements. Uh, I, got, I got three. I, I, got, I, got many, I got several houses, homie. Uh, nobody knows where I sleep. Uh, so, uh, so it was several people involved. Uh, yeah, it was several people involved. So, uh, damn. Uh, it wasn't about me though. See, certain things have to happen. Uh, it, 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 if your friend die, your friend death is supposed to have an impact on you that causes you to change something mm. about your life for the better. Lesson. Right? Uh, my brother wouldn't go listen. So something had to happen mm. sure. for him to listen. Because you going back to the hood, my nigga. You've been gone 31 years, nigga, on a 114-year sentence since you was 17 years old on a capital learn. murder charge, you gotta right? Re, you got to relearn some things. Nigga, and, and, and so you done went back to the hood. Well, we all know, nigga, in order to change your life and change things, the first, and the first things that you have to change is people, places, things. You can't get out of prison and go back to the same people, the same places, and the same things. You're going back to prison, yeah. Right? Facts. If you done graduated from Paul Mitchell Barber College, nigga, where you learn how to cut white people's hair, you yeah. learn how to dye, why would you it take these skills clipping. all to the hood? Ain't no white people coming there to get their hair cut. Mm -hmm. Nigga, you learn, you got the kind of skills where you can go to the mall and get $70 cuts. Uh -huh. Why you coming down here with these niggas with these $30, $40 cuts where they fight and shoot at? And you Paul Mitchell certified. And I'm telling you, <laughs> nigga, I'm telling you, my uh -huh. nigga, you get these niggas action at me, my nigga, because you my brother and you still want to hang around these niggas. I get it. You got to get it out of you. But, nigga, you get these niggas action at me. So he had to, so this had to happen to me so yeah, he can realize. see little bro know what he talking about. Mm -hmm. See, big bro don't think little bro know what he talking about. And I had to tell that nigga, nigga, you been gone 31 years. Nigga, don't none of them nigga give a fuck about you, nigga. Word. Nigga. Yo mama was the only one riding down there to see you, nigga. I quit you at some point. Mama was the one still sending you money, nigga. When you start fucking up and it looked like you didn't want to come home, nigga, I said, fuck you. Mama ran down there to encourage still, you. Yeah. That's your partner, nigga. That's your partner, nigga. Mama, that's who rode that 31 year did none of them, nigga. Mm. But this had to happen to your little bro so you can get from down there, nigga. I had to sacrifice this to get you from down. Because, nigga, these niggas don't have action at me, my nigga. But you came home and gave these niggas action Excellent. at me because you fuck with these niggas, homie. And I'm telling you, these the has-been niggas. These yeah. the used-to-be niggas. I'm the today that nigga. Huh. Yeah, now, nah, nigga, yeah. I can buy you a barbershop. Nigga, fuck the hood, nigga. <laughs> but he had to see. What you don't want to do is shatter his dreams. That's nigga, the, that's, that's so the yeah, that's, that's the, the hard, hard part. part. That's the hard but nigga, part. in the process, I, I, I nigga, yeah, you took that bullet. Well, yeah, yeah. So luckily, uh, it wasn't a bullet, but uh, you, you took. That. But 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 the nigga who did it is a real snitch, FBI informant on a historical drug case. But because he's a high valued gangster in the Ooh, streets, he just wanted. dropped some bars over there. Because he's a high valued gangster yeah. in the streets, yeah, they yeah, overlook and turn a blind eye yeah. to his flaws. And he a real killer. And then the internet, it always gets a little wild when oh, the well, stories I, come out. Well, I brought it to the internet so it can get wild. See, so what I did yeah, was, I uh, uh, I know his videos on there, right? Mm. 
Nigga, I got above they videos. Smart. So let so, me see. So, so question. Smart. <laughs> you heard what happened with Budden? Nah. Uh-uh. They said he got beat up last night. Oh, uh, well. Night before on, on, uh, at the strip club, and it was the same thing. Um, people saying they beat him up, or they, they jumped him or whatever, and he's saying he didn't. Or they uh, didn't they, he said he just listen, he got sucker punched, but he saw him cock back and man, listen, clock his ass or some uh, shit. They must ain't never seen a nigga take a ass whooping then. <laughs> when niggas take a ass whoopings, uh, nah, homie. <laughs> You go. He's you, supposed you, to look like. Yeah, it. <laughs> that's just for supposed sure. To show. Yeah, yeah, because he was on it. He was on it. I, I, I tell people all the time. But you don't got, your butt and get punched in the face too much. Uh, that's just people trying to. Yeah, you know, what I mean, I'm a Joe Budden fan, but like he's got a lot of he's got a lot of punch in the face incidents. Plus, you know, he gonna post about remember. it and talk about uh, it for a week. So, what what what? Here's the thing, homie. Uh, everybody go try you when you got the light on you. Word. Motherfucker gonna try you when you got the light on you. He's trying to get a little spray. So that's what I was telling Big Bro. Bro, uh, you know prison. You don't know the world. Nigga, you don't know everybody that's coming to you playing on you because your brother got resources. Right. Your brother connected. He ain't been out here like that. Yeah, nah, know. so you gotta always keep that in mind. <laughs> nigga, all them pretty bitches, them pretty robot bitches on Facebook, <laughs> nigga, you don't know who behind them robot looking bitches. They too pretty. All these, nigga, you don't know these people, but they pretty. So uh, I, I had to hip him. But this, they're going to try you, homie. So you have to move strategically. I moved very strategically. My brother became my kryptonite. Yeah. But I had to get him out the hood, nigga, because you go go back, and that's going to kill mama. Yeah. But, nigga, long as you there, they got action in me because yeah. at some point, I'm going to stop by like I did. Yeah. And nigga, like I said earlier, I fuck with gangsters, killers, and street niggas. Mm. I disrespect all the people oh. that niggas is scared of. And I do it boldly. I walk around the city like I can't be touched. I travel around the country like I yeah. like this in a little old bitty nigga. Yep, just you. I seen you. Little old bitty nigga. Too deep, baby. Oh, uh, and it's I that. don't and, and I don't think I'm bad. Oh, uh, I'm just talking against evil. Mm. And though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, yeah. I shall fear no evil. Hello. Yeah, so if a nigga got a problem with what I'm saying, homie, uh uh go look at them niggas just talking about the black woman BBLs. They doing way more damage to the woman's spirit than I am doing to the gangster spirit. Yeah. See, we trying to kill the gangster spirit. We ain't trying to kill the woman spirit and make her be a hoe. Mm. Right. See, they 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 shaming a woman into being a hoe, cause they think a woman can't have no flaw. The high value man don't fuck with a hundred and ninety pound woman. They're lying, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, <okay>. Shit. <laughs> yeah. So now, nah, homie, uh, I uh. I I did that for the internet because I wanted to spin a narrative and, and show people. That, uh, for one, the police was called before the ambulance. Mm -hmm. But they go say they go tell you he calling the police in the ambulance. Yeah, yeah. it don't work like that. The police, Can't. you don't call the ambulance, then it's, the police. It's only one phone number. <laughs> yeah, you call nine one one. What did happen? Yeah. Uh, emergency fire or what? But no, boom. boom. Yeah. So so so. As a logical thinking, law-abiding citizen, nigga hit me in the head with a gun. He get the ups on me. I'm asleep. He got the ups on me. You can't, you, you can't, he don't hit me no more. So I said, oh, this bitch ass nigga really ain't what people say he is. Mm -hmm. He supposed to chili dog me if he really that mad. Uh, you looking crazy. Nigga, he supposed to, yeah, if you, done, to, yeah. if you don't want, because you got a, you got, to brag about, you got a bad ass charge just to do this. Man, you're supposed to go on, go through, because you got a badass charge. So for the barbershop to be on it, he ain't thinking, nigga, this is your place of business. I'm a high-profile high client. How y'all let this happen? Come on now. And I'm asleep. 
How you let a nigga hit your client while he sleep? Yeah, everybody got eyes in a barbershop. I come on, homie. Fuck. If you come so, in the back door, the front so, door, so, we all got eyes. So if so I he get, wasn't he wasn't out no Eric Holder type how you shit. Let this happen. Every listen, homie. When it, when, when whenever a high profile person gets killed, or, or whether that's in the streets or whatever, it ain't no one individual doing it. Mm. Nigga, Eric Holder didn't do that by himself. Yeah. No, but that's what I'm saying. So, like, uh, when, when that situation transpired, he went all the way through with it, right? Oh, like, uh, yeah. And then uh, you got somebody that just takes their moment uh, and fucks it up in the sense, right? He fucked it up. Yeah. Uh, so, so, when I, so, when I'm thinking about it, I'm saying, okay, uh, you got to outthink these niggas. Because what I responded to could have tricked me off the streets. See, when they, when, when they leave up out the building, nigga, I run to the car and go get my gun. And it wasn't a long run. It was a quick pace. So when I when I come back in, uh, one of the, one one of the niggas that was in on it, uh, out of my anger and my anxiousness to to encounter them, where them bitch ass niggas at? The niggas say in the bathroom. Oh. So I turn to go in the bathroom. My logic said that bitch ass nigga lying, but they done bought enough time. So now I'm running out the door. They retreating. If I shoot, you're in trouble. Yeah. They retreating. Regardless, yeah. Everybody in on this. If I ain't thinking, they don't trick you out your whole now, position. Now the people that's in on it that help plan the assault, now they the witnesses to me to get me mm. gone. Because they retreating. They retreating. All about how the story will be told. They retreating. Yeah. So even though this crime have occurred in here, they running away. At this point, when I come out that door, if I shoot anything, I'm wrong, wrong. now. Hmm. Because now other witnesses is going to be started. Boom, boom, boom. And That's it seems like the way you explained the individual that did this, it seems like. He's a person that could instill fear in these individuals to do it anyways. Oh man, the, uh, uh, that's 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 part of his mo. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why he's been able to rule in the city for so long by fear, intimidation, violence. Did not get people to testify against him. Uh, uh, I ain't no nigga that I ain't I ain't smart enough to be scared. Yeah, y'all don't know how. Yeah, I ain't smart. You got to, you got to be, you got to plummet me, be pounding on me. You can't hit me one time and scare me, right. nigga. You got to deliver an ass whooping to me, nigga, to instill fear in me, nigga. So, uh, if I can't whoop you, I'll put you in jail. If I can't whoop you, homie, I'm gonna put you in jail. And while you in jail, nigga, and you make bond. I'm on Nicole Brown Simpson and run a gold brown. Yeah, what they did to OJ, I'm gonna go hit you civilly. So I'm so now now I'm gonna hit you civilly. Oh yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, and, and, and since and since you a big gangster and you got a, a, a FBI paperwork that you snitch, we go turn your story into a movie on Tubi, and I'm gonna get paid off you. <laughs> See your name is your name is your name is. Is is, my is, name is so my so name. so I'm gonna change the movie to your name. See, your name is Kelvin. I'm gonna change the character, the movie name to Calvin. That's it. The 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 the, the, the name of, of the historical drug bus was called the fishbowl. Life in the fishbowl. I'm gonna say life in the fish tank. And mm -hmm. twist some things and turn it into a two because I'm doing acting now. So rather than getting back at the nigga, and throwing tearing, my life away, having brother throw Can his life away. Watch this. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, nigga, you done already been to the feds. An uh, aggravated assault, nigga, put you away another 15, 20 years. Then I'm finna come back and hit you civilly, so I'm gonna put a lean on the house. <laughs> Play I'm gonna put chess. a, you ain't gonna be able to play taxes or nothing. He's playing chess. <laughs> and I'm gonna take your story, nigga. And make it my movie. I like that. Because you got a historic story of one of the most historic drug busts in the city of Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. Nigga, you brought down 48 Crips at one time. Your own Crips. Mm -hmm. And you called the hits. Mm -hmm. You was the nigga who sent them on the hits doing these murders and killings. 
only to tell on them niggas. And when the feds came and got all y'all, you threatened niggas' lives. You threatened niggas' families not to tell on you. And when they didn't tell on you, you immediately told on them to get free. That's what the big homies do, cuz. And they get a pass. Because they, they can kick your ass. Yeah. And I'm the little nigga saying, I don't give a damn about ass kicking. Nigga, you got, you got a scarlet letter. <laughs> I'm playing mm. snitch. You a real snitch. So I got mad at the city one day and say, man, how y'all gonna let me play snitch and act like I'm a snitch and this nigga really a snitch and won't nobody say nothing. That's what made me start saying something. So then this big time rapper came home named Twisted Black. Twisted Black was in prison. He had three 30-year sentences for drug distribution that he rapped about. He had a song called I'm Gonna Cook My Way to the Top. That's what got him convicted. Mm, shit. Because he talked about him cooking dope and he was really cooking dope. These rappers be snitching on so, themselves. So, 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 are you a snitch if you snitch on yourself? You goddamn right. Yeah. You a self-identified snitch. Yeah, they so, so, like so, so, Pete Game, right? Man. So, so, this nigga, they at odds. This big rapper and this big street nigga. And they was buddies and best friends at one time. The rapper is standing on the G-code. He ain't snitching. The real gangster and killing snitched. So, the rapper is in federal prison rapping about how... He didn't stand on the code. This is for my nigga, T-Cat and Big. This is for my nigga oh, that man. took they leg. So he's shaming the G nigga. <laughs> Only to come home for them to embrace and hug one another before the city with all the other G niggas. And I'm saying at this point, guys, we should bring shame to this street shit, my nigga. Because ain't mm. nobody standing on these codes, my nigga. Mm. Homie, they selling this shit to our kids, my nigga. All these niggas snitching and Tracking telling my nigga. The, the only reason we ain't finding out most of these niggas snitching because they homeboys is taking plea bargain. They're not going to trial. That's so the what only do you think reason. about uh, 1090 Jake exposing everybody? Uh, well, he snitched. That's how he know how to expose. He snitched in jail, wrote a grievance on a nigga. He talked about that. He said he didn't snitch. Oh, uh, but they got paperwork said he did. If you write any information, that's telling. Didn't he give information on a CO? Uh, I don't know. I don't know much I about it was a Jake. CO, yeah. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know much about 1090 Jake. Uh, I just know people done produce paperwork where he's giving up information on another inmate. Mm. Telling is telling, whether you tell on a CO or not. If you tell on a CO, you'll tell on a crook because you got a Definitely. nature of telling. Definitely. Telling is telling. You don't tell on nobody if you don't tell. A CO, a cop. The crooks don't go file complaints on cops. They take the mistreatment and wrongdoing. I'm a crook. Okay. Yeah, you don't tell on CO. Uh, you take the mistreatment and wrongdoing. You're a crook. Crooks get mistreated. Shit, if you do, you got to know what come with it. Crooks get mistreated. Why do you want to be a crook? Nick, crooks don't get treated fairly. Crooks don't get rewards. Nigga, crooks... Don't get benefits, <laughs> hard times, <laughs> consequences, and repercussions. Betrayal, death, jail, distrust, and dishonor. All of it. All that is part of being a crook. You learn. So, nigga, Ooh. you not law to your friends Ooh. when you a crook. You cross them. This is a, being a crook. So, why are we trying to bring law to in the crook world. No honor amongst thieves. So uh, that's why crooks don't have friends. They have crime buddies. And when they get through committing crime, you go that way, I go that way. And at one point, we got to kill each other because I think we're doing too much together. That's why crooks don't stay, keep doing the same thing. Because at some point, we got to kill each other, homie. We got to cross one another. We're doing too much together. Watch every game that rode the horses and rode, robbed the trains together. Eventually, they got to kill each other. Mm. Watch every game that started up from little boys and grew up. Eventually, they got to start killing each other. It gets hot. Because you do too much together. So what do you feel about individuals like a Vlad TV um, that does do, like I think he does uh, very detailed interviews and asking questions. What is your like opinion on somebody like him? Uh... Uh, 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 Vlad, Vlad, Vlad interviews uh, help initiate in, in, investors. Vlad, Vlad interviews uh, make uh, Vlad interviews will make a motherfucking detective who ain't got nothing to do 
go into the fire room and start looking in the fire. Mm. Be, be, because uh, loose lips sank ships. And, and, and these new gangsters got very loose lips because they get off to giving interviews. Uh, gangsters normally didn't come outside during the daytime because they didn't want nobody to know they was gangsters. Uh, the real crooks come out at night. The real crooks come out on third shift in the jails and in the prisons. They ain't out during the daytime when the warden and the captains and everybody moving around and the light can get on them. Real crooks don't want you to know they're a crook. They play square. And when they retire... They go on and play like they ain't never done nothing wrong. This group want everybody to know they done done wrong. Mm -hmm. These crooks. We had a we had an artist by the name uh, S C Y Jim that came up here and he was talking about, you know, now it's about the competition. Really, is about and, and I, I believe it was S C Y Jim. I don't want to misquote it. I'm pretty sure it was him. But he was talking about now the competition is about. Who's up on bodies? With these rappers, it's like, who got more bodies than who? It's not really about bars anymore. You know what I mean? It's not about the hits. It's about, I got I got more bodies on you than you got bodies on me. Those the kids. Uh, that That's that group from, from 12 to 30. Uh, that's that group from 12 to 30. Uh... uh because they'll never count a million dollars. And 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 for them, killing somebody is is equally to to what we would feel if we got a million dollars. But it's it's only that. You only get that feeling until you hear the pow of the gun and watch the body drop. From that point on. If you don't get arrested and you get away, you want that feeling again. That's why you keep making that sound go pow. You get that feeling to the gun go pow. And then a, a, a level of reality uh, sets in. But because you're young and, and you've never allowed yourself to look at your reality, uh, that little moment when you kill and shoot somebody, it, it seems surreal. That's why I feel and look like a dream. It feel like a dream. It feel like this is not happening. Because, nigga, most of us don't really get to face reality to, to that level and be saying, man, you really look at life when you do that, homie. So that's why it becomes addictive. Because the, the, the feeling in the rush that shooting a gun and the power that that gives you, mm -hmm. uh, nigga, that's like being on heroin. That's like, uh, it's like a motherfucker when they smoke crack and they say they got for that first, so you keep chasing that high. Uh, and you get lost in that shit, homie. And, and that's what's happening now. Uh, these niggas feel good killing my nigga. Just like we feel good getting money. And, and, and so that's what I'm. That's why I recommend, man, lock they little asses up, so you can kill that spirit in them. That's the only thing that's putting it out. When they go to jail and meet other killers, that's following rules, that's respectful, that's speaking Arabic, that's reading the Quran. Mm -hmm. They don't see them killers out here, that's real like that in their reality. So that's why I say niggas send they motherfucking ass down there, nigga, so they can go meet what they trying to become so they don't become it. I'm going to say it again. Send they ass down there so they, so they can meet <laughs> what they trying to become so they don't become it. Yeah. I had a real serious argument the other day. Yeah. Discussion and debate. I like, I like pushing people to their limits and kind of getting the truth out of them and what they really feel about certain situations and why they feel the way they feel. Yeah. And I'm talking about racism. Okay. That still exists. Oh yeah. So, so this, I want I want to hear you roll on this. So so you would I'm, I'm speaking it. to the individual and I'm like, you know, I don't think people really truly understand what racism is sometimes. Sometimes you just I, I think if you're not black, 
I don't know if you could feel it. And so me and him are going back and forth, and he's it's hard, it's his hard case. to see it. It's, hard, he, it. it's hard. If you're not black, you're not gonna feel it, and you're gonna see it, but you're gonna deny it. We can. We're the only ones that can feel it because we're the we're, we're on the receiving end of it. We're the only ones that can feel it. They can see it, but because certain privileges they have, it, it muddies the water for them to see it. Because racism is, is, is hidden now. It used to be blatant. No colors allowed. Whites only. But now it's, it's so, it's like this carpet. We can't see all the fiber in this carpet. That's racism. It's embedded in the fabric of this country. Mm. It's, 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 it's in the bank loans when we it don't is. get to see who tell us no on the bank loan. There it is. It's, it's in... It's in, it's in it's in this zip code when we don't know the medium average of the income in this zip code. We don't know who all got diabetes, high blood in this particular zip code. Yep. We don't know all the young people that's catching this one particular. That's racism. We can't see it. Because capitalism have come along and is pushing racism out. It's just that we ain't died yet, the ones who know racism. Our kids don't know it. Mm. They don't know what it looked like. They don't even know how to identify it. They know classism. Rich, poor. But racism will still exist, even when it's classism, even when it's capitalism, because yeah. this country was built on racism. It's yeah. embedded Literally. in the fabric of it. Literally. Yeah. That's why certain races got hate bills and we don't. Because racism still matters. That's why Asians have a hate bill. And there's no bill for somebody to say, I'm going to go kill a bunch of black people like they did in Jacksonville. That was a hate crime, but it wasn't identified as a hate crime. It was identified as a mental illness crime. Ugh. Dylan Roof. Man, so uh, we're the receivers of it. So other people can't see it. It looked like we're just complaining and, and making it up. Do you think... Uh Reverse racism is, is a real thing? We don't have no power to reverse it. We don't have a bank where we can deny a white person a loan. Mm. Uh, we don't set the credit rating scores for the FICA scores. Uh, we don't control the, the school districts mm. because the school district is where racism is, is, is bred and, 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 and indoctrinated and taught. But in the simple aspect of it, do you feel like some black people unfairly just hate white people because they're white? Oh uh, yeah, but but uh, uh, black people now hate everything, not just white people. We can't be racist because we hate one another more than we hate anybody. Mm. We some hateful, hearted, prejudiced motherfuckers. I'm gonna say it again. We some hateful, hearted, prejudiced motherfuckers. So. We can't dispel racism. We have to teach racism and teach prejudice. Prejudice is a mindset. Uh, racism is an act. Mm. It's behaviors. Prejudice is a mindset. Yeah, homie. Racism is an act. In behaviors, homie. It's all right to be prejudiced. Nigga, you see a bunch of white people sn <laughs> snuffing their mouth, you better not eat their food. It's all right to be prejudiced. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's all right, nigga. Uh, you don't want your daughter date no black dudes. It's okay. He going to stretch your pussy out. And she ain't going to want no more black dick no more. It's okay. And you want white grandbabies. You want white grandbabies. But your daughter like rap music and NBA basketball players. So it's all right for you not to want your daughter dating no black NBA player. Homie, we lost one of our greatest rappers. I mean, I'm sorry, one of our, our greatest icon wrestling figures because he had a prejudice, not a racism. Huck Hogan didn't want Huck Hogan didn't want Brooke with a nigga. How was he wrong? I don't want my daughter with a nigga. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He said, "Man, he I would rather." And, and then he said, "I would. Well, if she go get a nigga, I'd rather him." But he didn't use the word nigga. Yeah. He said black person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, "I would rather her date a ball playing nigga." How he wrong for saying, "Homie, they stripped him from the Hall of Fame, all that, homie." Yeah, they missed. They missed what he was saying. <laughs> Jerry Jones, 
a picture come out during Jerry Jones' era in time where Jerry Jones kicking him a nigga in the ass with the white folk. Jerry caught on camera, nigga kicking a nigga in the ass. Was he? I thought he was just standing in the background. I think his foot was out there. I don't know. Okay. But he part <laughs> of it. Caught yeah. the but but somebody look up the pic. Hey, but listen, how is he wrong today for doing what they did back in their day? That's what they did back in their day. It's no different when a white boy come to our neighborhood trying to buy crack. Boy, we go take him through the ringer trying to buy dope. Yeah. We was taught not to sell dope to white people. But then the white girl started coming in. Nigga, when that white girl leave our neighborhood, nigga, she going to be raggling the motherfucker. Because when she come in fresh into the streets, every dope house go fuck on and trick with her. They go get her a car, run her motherfucker car in the ground. When we get through with a white person, ain't going to be no good. It's yeah, they're no, going to fuck that Pontiac Sunfire Come on, man. You know it's I mean? no, it's, it's so, so that's that the, turquoise Pontiac Sunfire. Come so on, that's now. the expectation when you see a white person in the hood. Yeah. So why would we be so mad when it's on the other end, when it's a black person in their neighborhood? Homie, it's like the line in the gazelle, homie. It's the nature of us. It's the nature of whatever ethnicity to treat us like this. It's in their nature now. Because we've helped them develop the nature on how we treat us. Oh, man. Man, do you know why niggas is scared to do something to white girls and white women? Because the white man used to have some, boy, you do something to a white woman, your ass was out of there. Was out of the they jail. sent the nature of, if you do something, man, mm -hmm. what they did to Emmett Till. Yeah. What they did to Emmett Till just for whistling at a white woman. Have 90s. set the record straight now, nigga. You better not do nothing to a white woman. Shit. They'll do a black woman bad in the motherfucker. But nigga, they won't put no white woman in no video. Did you see what happened to the baby when he did that? Put that white woman in that video acting like he was doing and they were prison. Homie, come on now. Yeah. Shit. We got to go get black women to do that too, homie. We got to go get black men to kill all day. So just our entertainment alone is a reminder that racism still exists still for exists. us. That's to keep us in our place because everybody else is, 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 is dealing with the standards of capitalism. Capitalism, homie. It's crazy that you drew the connection between those two because it's very real. Uh, if you get you some money, if you, get, if you a nigga that can get you some money, nigga, uh, you, can, you can live over racism, but nigga, racism is still here. So yeah. you never know when... You're gonna have to deal with it as a black person and your millionaire. Oprah went overseas and had to deal with it. Still, uh, they still, even mm -hmm. though you rise above it, you're not because of capitalism. It's still a standard for you because you're always a receiver of it. Now you know me. We've been we we've known each other now for what damn near two year, or three I think. months. It feels it feels, it feels, it feels like, like a year. Like, yeah, it feels yeah, like, like a year because we had a lot of conversations. <laughs> and I'm Latino. Puerto Rican and Dominican. My nephew, my nephew's black as black fuck. Black in the you know what I'm <laughs> And um shout out to Jill. And my problem is with these people who don't understand what racism is, my nephew could get pulled over for doing shit that I do every single day and I never get fucked with for. Right. And they immediately speak to him like he's a bitch, he's less than. And don't get me wrong, I know my nephew has a motherfucking attitude. I'll never give him the passes if you don't talk like you ain't that motherfucker, you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> but when he tries, sometimes he still gets treated like he's less than. Uh, that shit bothers my soul. And I have a kind, I'm, I'm, I'm Latino, so naturally throughout life, I've always been viewed as I'm in the middle of it. You are. You know, and I, and I try to sit there and I have the, have the conversations with people who are Caucasian and I say, hey, this exists. And they're like, ah, oh, you know, you're just being foolish. You're just, and I'm like, I, I seen it. Oh. I felt it as a yeah. I felt it as a Latino. I lived in a neighborhood that I was a spick to the police. Yeah, uh, you know it, what I mean. It, I was I was uh, there. It, it exists in Puerto Rico. The light skinned Puerto Rican and the dark skinned Puerto Rican. Uh, the the Asians and Dominicans. Yeah, yes. it, it, it exists there, but that's 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 not our racism. Our racism is specific. That doesn't apply to nobody else but this black here. Mm -hmm. Nobody else in the world got done like these people here. Mm. Nobody else 
in a free world society is, is, is at such a disadvantage as we are here. And, 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 and it's an obvious disadvantage that won't nobody admit to. Being born black in America, you are at a disadvantage at every institution, at every level of society that you go in. And you better not be a darker black. Right. That's another layer a of a barrier over you. You better not let your hair grow to be nappy. Right. You better not grow no dreads like your nephew. Mm -hmm. You better That was not, the basis of the conversation. You better not yeah. take on this look. That alone. You feel like people with dreads that are black get I know I know get like looked I, at differently. Uh, yeah, I, it's, I, it's I know a that's why I cut mine. Yeah. I had I had dreads. Uh it's not right. Our Supreme Court said it's okay not to hire them people with their hair like that. That the jobs can do this. Homie, no other person has these type of. We always Hurts. have somebody over us, no matter if we go get a job. Our truth is always questioned compared to anybody else's truth. Always. Uh, if there's a problem and they can't identify who the exact problem is, we're automatically assumed to be the problem. If we complain or if we disagree, we're automatically discredited yeah. our complaints. But don't let us become angry about something that's valid. Yeah. The fact that we became angry and we're showing our anger, our complaint is no longer valid because we're angry and we're black. Yeah. Out the gate. Homie, they'll dismiss us. And... They use that excuse. Well, he got angry. He was talking loud. So yeah. that's a tool that they always use. The angry black man, it's true. the angry black woman. It's true. I had a I had an employee that worked for me. Um, black dude, 6'2", six, six two, two thirty. Big he, dude. Big, he can't get angry. Big dude. So, but I'm telling him, and a lot of the people that we work with are Jewish. It's a lot of you know, and white people, and Russian people, and things like that. And he he had a situation where he lost his cool. He was expressing himself, and I said, listen, bro, I had to pull him to the side. I said, listen, you don't have the ability to express yourself in that way because no. all they're going to see and write that off as the angry black the big, angry black guy. You, you just I said, said, even if you're right. I, 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 let's stop right here. This is very important. You just said three adjectives. Mm -hmm. If you're big, that's a strike against you, black man. Automatic. If you walk into a job. You walk into the hospital, you walk into a restaurant. If you big, that's a strike. Mm -hmm. If you dark, that's a strike. If you get angry, that's a strike. If you don't smile, that's a strike. If you can't greet, that's a strike. If you take away the big, little small guy like me, Caramel Brown, you don't pose a threat. Mm -hmm. See, that's, and, and I ain't trying to cut you off. I just think it's important that you're saying that and you're saying that because that's how I'm, how I look at it and how I view it. I've been Latino. I, I grew up in a black neighborhood. I moved to a white neighborhood when I was like 13, 14 years old. I saw that it was changing, right? Like I moved to a Latino neighborhood yeah. first and I moved to a white neighborhood and I noticed mm. that the way everybody was sizing each other up, it's because white people feel comfortable talking to a Latino with my complexion. Yeah. They feel comfortable saying what they say. Oh, well, he's a good one. Yeah, well. You know what I mean? I heard the conversations plenty of times. I kept my mouth shut. You, you have I to observed. think there's always a thought, what if I saw him in the back alley? That that thought, mm. is it, it, it gauges them on how they look at us. So, homie, in the job interview, nobody wants to hire the big black guy because if we got to fire him, who's going to tell him? <laughs> Same right. with the jewelry. <laughs> oh, so, I, uh, you can tell them. I uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, you, uh, that's your... so so <laughs> if, if if you're big and your voice is deep and your voice is loud, you scare white people. You scare people. Even if you're right. Even if even what you're saying is true. Even is valid. Even even if you're a friendly guy. And your voice is loud. The complexion for protection, like somebody. Come on, wrote. homie. So I teach young it's niggas that, thing. homie. 
I teach young niggas, say, homie, you better not be no little black ass nigga getting in trouble and you got to go in court. The darker you are, the more time you'll get. Hell yeah. And if you think any other way about it, you're losing your motherfucking the darker, it's the, okay to It's okay to look at this and see it and understand it's obvious. It's okay. It's okay to understand that this shit is going on. Man, it's it, okay to understand that uh, that you might go get into a situation, and you if you go with your light skinned black friend, you're good. If you go with your, your dark hey, skinned black black friend, they're gonna automatically different. assume something if, different of you. I've been there. If Kodak Black looked like y'all, uh, he would get the same affection that Extension got. Yeah, but, but because he's a mm. dark. Black little kid, yeah, black worse, little though. ugly motherfucker, struggling <laughs> with what he's struggling with, he don't get the same compassion. If he was like uh, Justin Bieber, sipping syrup, yeah, dealing with what yeah. he was dealing with. A good friend of mine, my boy Kenny, shout out to Kenny P. He uh, helps do some of the computer work for the, for the podcast. Right, shout out Kenny. Uh, back in the day, when we were younger, he had a charger, black charger, black tents, police cop lights, sound system. Everything, the whole works. We over there doing, we over there schmalking, doing the thing. We cut off in the parking lot. We get pulled over, and the police say, wow, you, you've built this thing from the ground up. Pop the hood. I want to see the engine. But let Kenny would have had dreads and some goals and a black and mild. It wouldn't it's have been, it wouldn't have been none of that. Oh, man, this is, you really hooked this thing up. Let me see what's under the hood. It would have been know like, get out the car. You got to be to not admit that, to not understand that? I'm saying. Uh, I, I was in a car. Two I was in a people. car wreck. I was rear-ended from behind from a blonde hair, blue-eyed white woman with a Louis Vuitton purse. She was texting and driving. When it got time to settle the, the, the law insurance, uh, my gold teeth was a factor. Uh, when we went to court, the lawyers wanted my gold teeth out because it it, it hurt the jewelry. Uh, when, when I take the stand to, to talk about... This this wreck, uh, they want to know where you went to high school at. And I'm thinking, man, what this what got to do with the wreck? Yeah. Well. Somebody ran a red light. What they well, got to do well, with anything? Well, 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 here's the thing, man. This is what we don't know. Racism exists. This is what it got to do with this. Nobody wants to give this black guy with gold teeth in his mouth no $250,000 from a car insurance wreck from this white woman. And we know he, he deserve it. He should get it. But he can't prove he's really this hurt. And he got some things on his black ground as a black guy, but his white jewelry is not going to award him this. Yeah, he went to MLK High School. So, 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 so l- let me show you what, so homie, listen. I had to see a neurologist. Uh, they offered me 55000 but the lawyer is suing for like a hundred and something for the whole insurance policy. And I was really injured. As a black man, they want to know. They'll settle with a white person, homie, if he's really if he can sure. prove, yeah. But with a black person, the insurance company know your color matters. Your insurance is higher because you're black. And you live over there in that black neighborhood. So the question was thing. during the deposition, they ask you, have you ever been convicted of a crime of moral turpitude? Bro, fuck. Most people don't even know what moral turpitude is. That can be anything. <laughs> right. Right? So in the deposition, I'm saying stuff like, well, uh, I, got a, uh, uh, I got a girlfriend, but I got several other girlfriends, and the wreck is inter- interfering with my sex life. I'm speaking culturally. When I get on the stand, this white lawyer know that all of these white people are mostly married, and they're going to look down on the horny black guy because they guy. think the black guy, all he want to do is sleep with a bunch of women. We don't want to pay this man. Come on, so dirty. You're going to fuck their wife. Come on, so but listen, so the stereotypes begin to sit in based on racism, and so now they saying, I ain't giving him nothing, even though you're really hurt. So the white lawyer know the more I ask him questions, well, what high school did you go to? I didn't go to high school. Um, oh, you didn't? I got my GED. Oh, that's great. Well, where do you get your GED? They already know when I say I got my GED from getting stayed home in school. Well, what is getting stayed home in school? She knows it's a juvenile facility that house murderers uh, or children. So we're well, getting stayed home in school is a boy at home. Well, what did you go to get? I object, Your Honor. Yeah, what that got to do with this accident, Your Honor, coach? this has <laughs> something to do because we Damn. asked him a question during the deposition. Have he ever been convicted of a crime of moral turpitude, meaning that you possibly would lie about something? Your Honor, he went to jail for murder. <gasps> 
Now the jewelry ain't finna give you nothing. This right. I did, but man, I had a car wreck. This right. ain't got nothing. You still hit me. But this how they. This how you get discredited, right. black man. But you don't know this. They do the same thing when you get in trouble criminally. They go back to say, well, y'all know when he was 12, he done this. Mm -hmm. They're not punishing you for what you've done. They've punished for what you did. Yeah, they punish you time. for what you've done. They're using what you did, black man, to get you for what you've done that they think you've got away with. They're punishing you for the person that they so think you lot. are. Oh, uh, well. In reality, they're punishing for what you you've because done. they think that you be... Not even because not even, in, my, in my opinion of it, I think they're punishing you for the person they think you are. Good people do bad things, exactly. like bad people do good things. So most of us are good people doing bad things to see. Everybody's did, done some bad. Well, shit. well, they're gonna sentence me to two years in jail, and every political function that I went to, we all drive away drunk, congressmen and all. Mm, yeah. Every function that I went to with politicians, they drinking, and everybody leave driving. Come on now. Come on. But the police will sit around in our area. But but this I know I, I know back home. Back home in Buffalo. I know there was a doctor that was sent home that lost his job. I also know uh a few individuals who lost their life behind bars. But I know a doctor who, who ran somebody over and just ah, he can't you can't practice being a doctor anymore. But you're good to go. Uh, when you look at when you look at local arrests, uh, but nobody's pulling the reports, you would see that this exists. Police pull over more black people than anybody mm -hmm. for basic traffic stop. All all of this is in reports. It's 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 there. Yeah. They do studies on this. To this day, it's all still there. Uh, but because it's so hidden, it's hard to prove. So. The, the critical race theory debate, uh, that's a lot of white people saying y'all are trying to reteach hate by saying racism existed and it still exists. That's to make the new generation believe that it don't exist because we got a lot of Melodians now. We got black kids who look like Latinos that look like Arabs that look Italian because they're mixed kids now. You pointed at me so I look like an Arab. No, I'm fucking <laughs> yeah. but, but hold on, uh, God damn it. But that, see that sounded racist on my part. So, I don't got no beef with no nah, Arabs. Nah. But saying. you still my have you nice. still have you dark skinned nah, black people. You. Yeah. They're gonna get, get they're gonna be mistreated even worse. Absolutely. Yeah, my men, men, listen, man, my Haitian brothers, homie, my dark skin, my 100% black people, we don't realize that we're going to be treated worse than our ancestors in the future of this country because racism still exists and we don't have no protection for us over racism. Meaning anybody can hate us. And act but on still, it, and we have no protection. No real we can't hate nothing. And you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but because mixed children, homie, will still be black, they're gonna get mm. confused for being Italian. They're gonna get confused for being uh, Arab. They're gonna get confused for being Hispanic. Spanish. But they're gonna be black children. So, uh, for a long time. Dark-skinned black people is, is going to have to eventually end up leaving America. Mm. They're going to have to get a passport and, and, and end up going other places. For one, they won't be able to get into the digital world. Even on social media, black platforms is done, is, is done one way. We're not paid how we're supposed to be paid. Our content is paid is, is less. So, come on, man. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's crazy. What we thought we wouldn't put up with as slaves is coming back. We seeing it, homie. So e even on social media platform, nigga, that's why I specifically told you two brothers, nigga, y'all gonna go far Come because y'all two handsome yellow niggas on said camera, that. and y'all are marketable. Y'all are two. Y'all, I told y'all that from the beginning, homie. Y'all are marketable. That's the darkest shit, though, man. And look what happened. It is the darkest shit. And though. look what happened. Yeah. No pun intended. No pun intended. Yeah. And nigga, y'all, yeah. y'all blew up because of the you're look. Right. You're not wrong. Because of the look, homie. It, it does. Y'all niggas blew up, homie, because of the look. 
Yeah, you know what I was I was about to say is for the longest time because I used to I came up rapping and um shout out to the Buffalo Bills yeah I just lost I'm, yeah I'm upset he got a bad I've been I've been watching it the entire time <laughs> taking off the jacket now by the way <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah. all right I've been trying to pay attention and chill out listening to Charleston speak gems and I'm like fuck let these motherfuckers go again. But say shout time, out to my Zoe niggas. My Zoe came in the building. Zoe. They make sure I'm safe when I yeah, go to Miami. Yeah, sure. And yeah, by sure. the way, uh, I want to add this. All the ZVs in the uh, listen, at about like huh. 12, 10, 12, 15, y'all hit the super chats. We're going we're gonna to ask Charleston White the questions you want to ask on the super chats. We appreciate everybody. I've been watching y'all. I'm paying attention to what y'all are saying on the on the chats. And um, um, that, now, when you take off the top, you also got to oh, take yeah. off the other part right there because yeah, for whatever this reason, this it should just did what it said. You know what? Yeah, what? It ain't even expensive. That shit's broken. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I was like, wait a second, what's going on? I tried to pour my drink and I'm like, this shit's over already. <laughs> Charles White brought his boys here and they drank the whole bottle that quick. I ain't even nah. see them. Send do my it. nigga back there. You know what I mean? We're going to go kick y'all, it y'all after work. Okay, man. Yeah, yeah, nah, them yeah, so, uh, so when I was rapping, when I was rapping, when I was younger, and I grew up in the east side of Buffalo, New York. If you don't know where the east side of Buffalo, New York, listening to enough of Griselda music could teach you. So I grew up, and I'm musically, I'm Puerto Rican, Dominican. I grew up around black, so I used to be comfortable saying nigga. Yeah. After a while, I felt like, you know what, that ain't my place. I don't even, I don't want to have the debate. I don't want to have the argument. So I just eliminated from the dictionary. I don't got enough pride to sit there and be like, I got to spit this. I got to say this yeah. every single time. And, and that I changed the way, I changed it up just because of the fact that I don't feel like that's something that needs to even be I, in my I, I lo- vocabulary. I, 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 I love my Puerto Rican brothers like you, homie, that, that, that comes because you're culturally, uh, you're, you're grounded in your culture. So, so mo- most real Puerto Ricans that I meet, homie, they they proud to be Boricua. Mm-hmm. Proud. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and when you proud of who you are, uh, you realize you know you ain't nigga. And you know that even though I'm your nigga, my mama ain't. So uh, she gonna be offended by you when she hear you say yeah. that. Uh, my grandmama ain't. I'm your nigga. So if you get too comfortable saying that word, me and you gonna be at the store and that old woman gonna hear you use it, and she gonna be really disrespected by it, and she ain't gonna exactly. say nothing, but she gonna be hurt. But this Puerto Rican boy, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, I, I I thank you for honoring uh, our nation, homie, and letting us have that. I Appreciate thank you that. for that, fam. Yeah. And it, it, for me, it's just it's just like I don't need to, you know what I'm saying? And I feel yeah. like you got all these artists that do. Do you feel like it's? Do you feel like there's any difference in it? Or do you get offended when you do hear it? Like, well, I I I don't get offended because I I understand that people don't know, uh, they don't know the extent of a nigger. They think it's a word, but those are people, and that was their name. Mm. When they died, they heard "die nigger," not "nigger," "die nigger," and it had a hate tone with it. I don't want that nigger in here. Where you going, nigger? Get from over there, nigger. That was a name. And that was a race of people. It wasn't a word. See, we think it's just a word. Those people are still living. I heard you touch on this before. Them people ain't gone all the way just at the picture. Those people still on earth, my nigga. Just like people still from the Holocaust. They still yeah, that my nigga. Is still here. So... To erase that word is to erase what those people endured because that word is the sting of what they had to endure. Uh Nigga, we came and took the sting out of it and we own it. We took the power. We took the power from the white man in his word that cursed those people. We ain't cursing the people no more. We proud to be nigga, but we shame to say nigger. Mm. We get mad. Nigga. We don't even know what they went through because we don't talk to our grandmothers. We ain't talked to now motherfucker ever been hit with a whip to know what we wouldn't take if we was them. We was told to go inside during the pandemic and we did. So we would have took the whipping too. 
We wouldn't Ooh. have fought back. Mm. We didn't fight back during the pandemic. Hello. Yikes. And nigga, they were using real brute force over us back then. They didn't use no brute force to tell us to bra mask. Suggestive. So I'm saying. For homie, the record, I ain't listening to anything them motherfucking cocksuckers <laughs> said. I did what the fuck I wanted Me too. To I was fucking, I with, drove, fucking with no rubbers, I no worked. nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, I drove, yeah. I worked. I was out there with no mask on. Everybody that said they had COVID, I was giving them a hug. I was so like, give me that COVID, God damn it. I'm good with it. Able, I traveled a lot. So yeah, to sure. erase them. to erase the word nigger and to be offended by the word nigger and to embrace the word nigga means you're an oxymoron. Mm -hmm. Because you can't say, what's up, my nigga? I'm a real nigga. I'm a damn nigga. Because. And get mad when somebody call you a nigger. You ain't a nigger. You could never be. They really complimenting you. You just uneducated and ignorant to not know the difference. That nigger is a compliment. Because you only got called nigger when you didn't do what they told you to do. Other than that, you was boy or girl. Come here, boy. Boy, didn't I tell you that? What are you looking at me like that, boy? You only was nigger when you rebelled and God, you made him angry. Y'all yo. <laughs> hear it? Charleston. Because <laughs> it's a different point of view. That might make you understand and look at the world a little bit differently. Like, some people will look at it differently. That's cool. You never but heard them say, don't call me nigga, but they said, don't call me a boy. I ain't a boy. It was a difference. Don't call me a boy. To make you feel less than a man, they didn't say nigger. They said boy. Mm. We have to go talk to our elders. And I didn't mean to cut you off, homie. Nigga, we got to go. That's why I love them niggas, homie. They took me to grandmama house. You can't cut me off. I respect it every single yeah. time. There's uh, never a moment where I'm like, this motherfucker uh, cut me off. Uh, homie, we got to go tap back into the nigga, the elder, the grandma and them. That's where the resources lie. That's where the freedom lie. Nigga, that's where all the answers to the questions to solve the family's dysfunction lie. It's with the old. But nigga, we ain't talking to the old. We know. think the new Go lead us the way. The old got us here. Because yep. when the world shut down, we got to go back to the old, nigga. What? Using flashlights, candles. <laughs> FM, AM, radio. Come on, homie. Yeah. Beans, rice, uh, perishable, non-perishable canned yeah, goods. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have to go back to the old. Sewing. Yep. Come on, homie. We can't abandon the old. Only to listen to all this new shit these new motherfuckers telling us as if they know it's factual and work for real and they read it out of book. Grandmama and them couldn't read. But the things they know to do work, but they couldn't read. They could barely read. But they knew how to keep life together. They knew how to feed. They knew how to love. Nurture. Come on, homie. To get us here. So we've abandoned the components and the elements that they had to get us here and to develop us. Look what we do on our kids. We not developing them like us. They smarter, but they weaker. And they Ooh. not wise. They can't it's live on their smarter, own. Smarter, but weaker. You couldn't teach these. These kids couldn't go get their own apartment at 16, 17 and be driving. They can't. They weaker. It's true. So, nah, oh man, uh, niggas don't know the Puerto Rican brother is our brother too. He the Afro Latino. He just got dropped off right there. <laughs> he was the slave nigga one, too. One, got dropped off right there. One pit stop before here. Yeah, that's all it was. Just dropped off in the Caribbean. That's all it was. Uh, that's why we fight against one another when we have to live amongst one another. Nobody fights more than two brothers. Mm. Need, nobody fights more than two brothers, homie. Nobody's jealous of each other more than two brothers. Well, mama, why he get that and I ain't get none? Yeah. He got a bigger yeah. piece of pancake than mine. His pancake bigger than yeah, mine. He ain't get whooped like I got whooped. Come what on, happened? Homie. He's supposed to. <laughs> Come on, homie. Oh, uh, uh, start nitpicking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Uh, it, it's what's in the heart. It, it ain't the color. 
And so uh, I, I'm telling people, nigga, I want to get all black people together, nigga. Uh, but nigga, it's going to be some niggas that don't like us just because we black and how he grew up. Just cause. Uh, so you got to look for your kind. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you got to you gotta look for your kind. And, and, and how do you identify your kind is by the action. It's certain things my kind don't do to our kind. We don't betray one another. We don't rob one another. Yeah. When I come to your house, Hopefully. I don't I don't look at your wife ass. Now, me and my people, they do that. My people, we fuck each other, but my kind, homie. Red birds don't do what blue birds do. Mm. Uh, lizards don't do what crocodiles do. And Alec, but they all in the same family. Ostriches and, and crows and, and, and owls, they all in the same family, but oh, nigga, they don't fly together yeah. and sit together. <laughs> different flock, yeah. So now, nah, <laughs> homie, so we got to quit saying, nigga, we all people. Yeah, we all people, but get with your kind, people. You got mammals, get with your kind. You got cold-blooded, get with your kind. A warm-blooded mammal can't run with a cold-blooded mammal. Get with your kind, my nigga. Just to, just to kind of switch gears a little bit. I heard you say, uh, and I think this, this this went pretty viral. You mentioned something about saying uh, that karma isn't real. No, nah, it ain't real. Right. Karma isn't real because it's too many successful people out here doing bad business and reaping all the rewards. Uh, karma don't exist you know. in the Bible. Hmm. What do, what uh, do karma do? don't exist in, in the Quran. So if... if Explain that a little if, bit. If karma is real, when do the 1% of the people who run the world get their karma? Get their just due. Right. But but is that to say that, like, for me to try to make it, let's say I'm trying to make it in the world, I'm trying to hit on the straight, straight and narrow, I'm trying to do everything right, is it possible to be successful without stepping on a few toes? Is there a just path? No. That gets you to the top? Uh, or do the, I got to be a savage at some point and step on some toes? The good guy never wins. Uh, the guy who plays by the rules never win. Cheaters win. Mm. Uh, the guy who works hard never makes it to the top. Yeah. He stay at the bottom working hard till he die. A friend of mine, because I had this similar thought, a friend of mine explained it to me. He said, it's two people. That get, they go into school for the same thing. They go to school. They do all their homework. They submit their projects. They go to work. They get a job. Both are doing the exact same thing. One person takes a shortcut. One person takes a good idea from somebody else and implements it into their process. They get the ju they get the boost. The other person just follows the rules the whole time, the whole way. Yeah, uh, the person that does that uh, is mediocre. Mm -hmm. um, Lackluster, mediocre yeah. performance. Uh, being I honest, don't want no mediocre. Uh, uh, homie. Uh, uh, Most uh, people are mediocre, by the way. Nobody wants an honest person, but they want you to say you're honest. Mm. Nobody wants you coming in here saying, homie, you come to my company, <laughs> and we cheating and doing wrong, yeah. and you're going to be honest. We have to recycle. Nobody. We have to. <laughs> but, yo, that recycle was, I, I looked down for a second and look at the comments. That recycle was really white. I was like, <laughs> shit. So, so, so think about the movie American Gangster, homie. Nigga, all them police was mad at that white cop for being honest. Right. Nobody Ooh. trusted him because he was honest. Nobody likes the honest guy when we doing wrong. Nice guys finish last. Come on, homie. Mm. Nobody likes the guy on the job who does the job by the book, does the job by the rule. When he come around, nigga, we all, come on Everybody. now. Yeah. Uh, here you go. <laughs> come on, homie. Oh. Uh, Damn. Because I would love to say that it's possible to make it to the top by following the rules and not fucking nobody over and not stealing and cheating and doing all this. But no, the nobody way shit be panning out. It's like you got to be a little dirty. You got to be willing to. They told us uh, it ain't what you know, it's who you know. The so, people didn't get to the top because they worked out. They knew somebody that helped them get to the top to that them. opened a door for them. Yeah. Uh, hard work does pays off. Uh but it don't make you win. It just pays off. Mm. Uh, you Man, uh, 
You got to kind of do something extra. You got to. You got to. You got to. The way I've, I've, I've learned to understand it is, at the very least, you got to understand the rules of engagement. So even if you choose not to be a dirty person or break the rules, you got to know what rules they're playing with so you don't not susceptible to it. You got to learn to lie even when you're telling the truth to make it at the top. Oh, correct. Homie, being an honest person is going to derail you. Unfortunately. You can't say to your woman, uh, I think you lying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't say to your woman she, when she say. She, she is beautiful. Uh, you can't you say, bet, you uh, bet not. <laughs> baby, do you think I'm fat in this dress? Yeah, baby, you look fat in that dress. You can't say that. Uh, you can't be at work and say uh, the things that you think honestly. You have to play. Oh, uh, homie, you have to be in a relationship with a person that you're willing to lie to to protect their That's feelings. Exactly. You can't be you can't be honest to your woman, nigga. <laughs> you bet not. <laughs> if you want peace, <laughs> you gotta learn to lie in order to maintain That's peace so crazy. and to protect her feelings. You can't be honest. So the thing that they tell us to do and the thing that they tell us to work really don't work. Being honest don't work, homie. Yeah. Nobody is honest all the time. Yeah. Everybody has an agenda, even with their honesty. Even with the honesty. Uh. Come on, my nigga. That's the cold. That's the cold, hard truth. Uh, that's why I say, my nigga, uh, just be real with yourself and real with the person you fucking with. That way y'all can deal with honesty. Just being real with yourself and being real to the people that you engage in and fucking with. That way y'all can deal with honesty. But homie, most people running from honesty, nigga, because that shit hurt. Yeah. That shit is shameful, nigga. That shit is 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 is, is heartbreaking. The truth, honesty. It's ugly. <laughs> Come on, my nigga. Shit ugly. The the honest truth is, homie, most of us go work till we die. We'll never be rich. Uh, most of us are going to pass down poverty to our children. Mm. That's the honest to God truth. But you can't sit up and have no conversation with the family and say that's what we go do. Yeah, to hear mm. And most of us don't give a fuck. Uh, I, I, I hate saying us because I'm not going to put myself in that conversation. I just feel like, like I'm somebody who I've been involved in business for a very fucking long time. On God, I always thought. 100% certainty that everybody wanted to be great. Everybody wanted to get rich. Everybody wanted to provide for their family. One of the hardest lessons I was ever taught was that's just you. Yeah, that's stop you. thinking Stop thinking that they wanted as, hard, as, as much they as you do. All wanted as bad and as I, and I, I, you do. Honestly, I really sincerely used to have arguments with any manager, every owner, and every, and every business partner I've ever ever had. Until a certain point, when I had that conversation with somebody and I was like, hey, I saw somebody that I felt like was good. And I'm like, you know what? I want to I wanna help you. Yeah. And I'm going to change your life. I'm going to give you a job, give you opportunity. And they were like, yo, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I, I spoke about this before. Mm -hmm. They're like, nah, I, as long as I got my bike and my video games, I'm cool. I took it as a joke. You're trying to strive for nothing. Big. I'm like, obviously yeah. he's joking. You know what I mean? But yo, come work with me next week. I got you. I'm going to take care of you. And I swear to God, the only thought in my mind was he's joking. He's going to take the job. But he was dead ass serious. And I started realizing that more and more as life went on. Some people genuinely don't look at it as I'm taking care of my child. They're looking at it as, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Um, they don't care about their children or their family or their name. Man, this motherfucker feel like they made a mistake having a baby. And they can't wait for this motherfucker to get grown and get out the motherfucking house. Oh. Uh, man, uh, 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 a man, when, 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 when he have a baby, it ain't a burden. It, it ain't a burden. Oh. Uh, that's an opportunity to right your own. You get to raise something opposite of you mm. and, and, and make it good. Nigga, you get to pull into goodness, into, uh, that's you again. You get to yeah. make you good, homie. Yeah. Nigga, you get to make you good. 
whatever type, whatever idea that you wanted to be, that you you get to make it that. Mm, whatever you didn't get. Yeah, so so you I, can be so, for that. So yeah. so as a man, uh nigga, I started realizing that it's not that they don't care. It's just that they was taught all a man need was some pussy, a car, a chain, and a watch. And they okay with that. It was some more niggas raised that all they need was a job, a burrow, a blunt, and a black in my eye. Even if they ain't got the kids. <laughs> Long as they can get some pussy, a burrow, a black in my eye. So, so that's what it became about. Because, nigga, we, ne- we wasn't taught, nigga. We wasn't taught how to value the baby. Because we wasn't valued babies. Ourselves, yeah. We wasn't valued babies. We just had a desire to be the opposite, nigga, of what we resented. Nigga, our dad is. We done that out of resentment. It's true. We became the kind of fathers that we are because we resented our fathers. Nigga, didn't nobody teach us how to do this. And then the craziest shit is when you start to realize, like, damn, I'm a lot more like that nigga than I Say, thought. man, I ain't yeah. even know that nigga, and I'm right. just like him. Shit. And everybody said, nigga, I'm an yeah, I'm just tell like me him. Too. You know why? <laughs> because I got his traits by nature. Nature. See, I got genius. that nigga nature, nigga. So uh, so when 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 you moving as a man, uh, nigga, that's why the woman you put that seed in. If you know your nature, if you know your nature, nigga, you know you know a little bit about your father. You look at all the men in your family. When you come in a woman pussy, you got to know she got to protect that nature. Because nigga, she could this nature can make a fucked up individual. And that's why most niggas who got gangster fathers and gangster daddies, uh, they be worse than their daddies. <laughs> if they if they daddies play football or basketball, they be better than their daddies. Mm. Yeah. Mayweather were better than his daddy. Look at Dion Boyd. That nature yeah. and that spirit that you got is in him so no. and is magnified in him, nigga. True. Whether you're there or not, <laughs> it's magnified. So yeah. the niggas with the gangster daddies, they damn near can feel daddy's shoes. If not the feet, they feet be bigger than him because the nature is there. That'd be crazy, too, when the dad's not around, but the, the traits are still there. That's why your mother starts to despise you, because you start showing your daddy's traits, and she can't say nothing to she you. Said, but she said, it's like, ah, real familiar. That's why she start whooping your mother, but she can't deny it. Uh, in, in science, it's called chromosomes. We call it nature, but in science, you got your mother's chromosomes, you got your father's yeah, that's chromosomes. Cool. That's why if, if your father is absent, you will take on your mother's chromosomes in nature and and be just as extremely violent as your mother was abusive. I'm going to say that again. You would take on your mother's traits, traits, homie, in your nature, and you would be just as violent or extremely violent as your mother was abusive. So that's why you see me here. That's why you hear me talk about the niggas with the whole mamas, the niggas with the abusive mamas. Homie, them niggas be dangerous niggas, homie. What? Them niggas be some dangerous, heartless niggas, homie. The nigga with the jealous mama. They take on their mother's traits, traits. with their natures, nigga. Mm. And they rule gangs. They mix, rule mix neighborhoods. with the masculine traits. What? So, yeah. It's the nature. Yeah. Be- because you still wow. got your masculine nature <laughs> with your wom- with the woman's traits. That means you emotional. You whoop a nigga every time you feel disrespected because you got your mother's mm. traits. Your mother only whoop you when she get mad. When she frustrated at a boyfriend, mad at the supervisor, let life be right and mama don't spank as much. Life is good. Come on, homie. Mm. So we take on, we have our nature. It's crazy. But we take these feminine traits that's, 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 it's, it's, it goes against our nature. That's why our behavior don't seem man like even when we gangster. It's, it's, man, oh man, because motherfucker sitting back saying, man, he acting like his mama. He get angry. He want to fight. That's the, that's the traits with the nature. So don't let the traits with the nature match the body size. And this little motherfucker, 15 year old with that body size, with his mama's traits and that man's nature to dominate and control. 
That's why he started beating up people. Okay, I can't. Okay, blah, 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 blah. It's it's something that isn't spoken about enough. Yeah, and I I feel like I see it. I see it every day. I got ten nephews. nieces and nephews. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I'm I'm Latino. Like I got black nieces and nephews. I grew up in an all black neighborhood. You see it. You know what I mean? I've I've been through. The difference of opinion, the difference of the way it looks. I've I've been the person that people felt comfortable speaking about certain people a certain way. You know what I mean? And I got to sit there and I decipher, like, I might not fuck with this person anymore. And I have to sit there and I got to observe it. I got to understand it. And I'm like, yo, if this person hates them, they actually hate me. Yeah. Oof. You know what I mean, and and and, and I, got, I I put myself in a bad situation right here. You know what I mean. I'm, I got myself in a bad little pickle, but people don't understand that. Yo, real quick, again for all the people that are watching, I do want to make sure you hit that like button. For all the yeah. people that are watching right now, I think there's like 1,100, 1,200 people watching live right Hello. now. Hello. If the- you ain't hitting that like button, you're a real piece of shit. <laughs> we ain't even gonna continue on. And I feel like. Right that now, play, this play. this live again. I feel like I need to take a couple hits out of my joint. I want to walk outside for about five ten minutes, take a couple hits. Y'all chill here, hit that like button. If y'all got Charles, are you trying to smoke a little bit? Yeah, you got that right. Oh, yeah. oh, and, oh, and, and if you're watching, hit them yeah, super yeah, chats yeah. right now. Oh, so when we come back, we'll ask you questions. But I feel like I'm like, line, God damn, I need to smoke uh, a it, bit. Yeah, man. If not, we can shit, yeah, nigga. We can extend it to the mall. Yeah, nah, shit, sure. let's get it. Yeah, because the time changed, man. Yeah, if not, we can stand it to the mall, man. Nah, we need to smoke right now anyways, but I do want to hit smoke the super break. chats for all the people that are super chatting. We smoke a couple minutes real uh, quick. Say, man, this is what I want to say to y'all. Yeah. Say, man, y'all thank these brothers for giving me an opportunity, man, yeah. to come over here and talk. Yeah. Uh, uh, Get out of character. Uh, Because <laughs> not not many platforms allow me to get out of character, homie. Uh, uh, This is refreshing. Uh, This is relieving. Uh, because uh, not only am I getting something from it, homie, uh, uh, we really talking some shit that niggas be afraid to talk about and say uh, on these on these platforms yeah. uh, because you got to keep a gimmick. And, and so uh, I'm telling y'all, homie, with this, with this, nigga, don't go gimmick. Man, keep this for the people. We mm. need this. Hell this bit, on. this is... Yes, this. Isaiah, this is live, God yeah, damn yeah, it. This live. is live. No, 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 nigga, they, they, this, yeah. this, this, this I is... I saw you say that. This is a way... <laughs> this is a way for the rapper... Uh, the entertainer, the actor, to come escape and just come, and just, be. yeah, and be, and just be. Yeah, Can we take a I didn't say Can be I smoke real. A little bit yeah, yeah, let's, let's go, go. Let's go. real quick. <laughs> y'all ask y'all super chats. We'll come back. We'll answer your super chats, and then we're gonna leave you the fuck alone. Maybe we do this week. Maybe we come back tomorrow. Damn. Yeah, you take that music out. You can mute it. Though. Yeah, nah, we'll we'll take it out. We'll get rid of it. But I don't give a fuck. Even you feel me. I've been doing this shit so goddamn long, and everybody's just expecting me. You know what? Uh, everybody's expecting me to chase a bag. Go. Do you really understand how dope this shit has been for me? For my yeah. mental health? For my life? The networking? Oh, me too. You really understand this shit? You think I need the uh, YouTube money? The YouTube money, what do they say? The, the, the money ain't good, honey. You know what I mean? I'm not sitting there stressing about the YouTube money. I hope it gets good, but I'm going to tell you something that's even doper. I had, if this shit ended today, if it's over, you know what I feel like? What's that? I feel gooder than a motherfucker. Why? Because Charles and I appreciate the fuck out of our friendship that we built through this shit. Uh-huh. Yo. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate the relationships, the network, the knowledge. I think this podcast and shit is over today. I feel like I'm a better man today. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Y'all, y'all ain't bullshit, homie. Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't on here bullshit. And and uh, it's crazy that that's a compliment. And, and, and everybody who walk in here, uh, outside the Adrian Broner shit, yeah. right? <laughs> Outside the Adrian Broner shit, homie. Uh, anybody can walk in here and see uh, that y'all are two uh, Afro-Latino brothers uh, uh, that know who you are, 
just not trying to be something that you're not, and 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 and, and that y'all are, 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 are men of of business and, and family men, homie. You got your nigga, your son coming here and dap up every Hell Hell nigga. Yeah. He go, he your son That's don't even shit to me. don't even have a concept of who we are. Yeah. Nigga, yeah, he, he get to dap up every celebrity that's big in this era. Yeah. And he don't have a clue. So when you <laughs> come yet. here, so nigga, that's why I say I don't know how Adrian Broner was able to come here and, and put on that. That lets me know he ain't the kind of nigga to observe what's going on around him. He because, was just drunk before I got here. I didn't know he was struggling. Oh, uh, well, with that's that. why I don't like drunks. He, yeah, he came in hard. Word. Yeah, that's why I don't like drunks. It's a difference between drinking and drunks. Uh, it's a difference between drinking and drunks. Nigga, drunks got a problem every time they get drunk. We all got that one drunk person. He has a pattern yeah. of behavior. Yeah, we people, all see him. People, like, all right, because they, people got, who they drink, ain't in control. People who drink tend to enjoy the occasion. Yeah. People who get drunk yeah. is trying to enjoy the scene that they cause for whatever pain that they feel. Mm. In just that moment. It, it, they, because they're going to cause a scene. Nigga, when they get drunk, they cause a motherfucking scene. <laughs> but they trying to enjoy the scene to supplement for the pain that they feel. That's why they get drunk. To, for whatever. Nigga, they ain't drinking to have fun. Nigga, they drinking to solve whatever problem they think they can solve but cause right. problems. At the, at, why, try, yeah, they're trying to solve self-problem with drinking but cause problem with other people. Mm. So... When, when, so so y'all had two instances here, Brona and, 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 and Brenner, right? So when I pull up, nigga, I'm I, I'm Girl, thinking. Girl, you look good once you uh, back that ass up. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, got to. Uh, nigga, Yo, we gave Charles it real quick. Let's not breeze past it. Yeah. We gave you a highlight moment, my Easy boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. He yeah, said, yeah. yo, before the interview. Brittany Renner was on Charles and White's hit list. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We sat uh, there and we provided <laughs> the infamous lap the dance. Delivery. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, she went the fuck in. Uh, I, I could have, I, uh, yeah, yeah, we, 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 I, I could have, yeah, it could have went there. They said, the, the comments, and a lot of the comments was like, his eye worked again. Oh, uh, <laughs> nigga, that, the, 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 the eye wasn't working. That, see, this is what I keep telling people. Nigga, they ain't looking at them waves in your hair. They ain't looking at your muscles when them draws come off. I don't care uh, how uh, fine you is. Nigga, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's about that dick. Yeah. It's about that on. dick. Nigga, they don't care how. Now, the nigga with the most money got to fuck good, too. <laughs> because the poor nigga can come fuck the rich nigga, bitch. That that poor nigga that can slang that good dick that can tell sweet lies, he don't need no money. He just can't stay nowhere alone. Cause they find out he alive with good dick. After a while, yeah. After a while. He got to keep moving <laughs> like Papa it with a, the Papa yeah. is a rolling the rolling stone nigga. That's why he a rolling stone. They catch on quick. But mm. uh homie, I left here with her. She, I didn't come Hello. here. I didn't come here with Brittany <laughs> Reynolds. Yeah. Hello, yeah. nigga. I, I, I left here with her, bro. Everybody was like, "What did you expect to happen?" Putting them two in a room, like, well, a lot uh, of people missed that. Uh, well, a lot of people missed two hours of dope conversation. They missed two hours of dope two. conversation. Oh uh, well, uh, nigga, she was well. <laughs> I'm a I'm a I'm a nigga. She like, was sexy red that night. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a nigga like a pastor, homie, and, and nobody is no man is more attracted than a than a the the pastor man that's char, 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 charismatic. <laughs> can't touch, yeah. Uh, the the president who has to pretend like he don't want no. So nobody is more attractive than that man to a woman, right? Mm. Uh, the polarizing figure. So she's attracted to the polarizing figure. Uh, and I'm a smooth little nigga, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so when I made my comments uh, about her, nigga, she publicly said in response, I rock his world. Yep. So she had already. confidence. Yeah, so she had already. <laughs> no been, shame on that life. Yeah, so, so like. I'm just going to say it right here. 
I had already told my nigga Anton Daniels, nigga, put me on the me, put me and Brittany together. Mm-hmm. And this my nigga. My nigga didn't put us together. <laughs> my niggas put us together. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. <laughs> hey, you want to know what's the most player shit about the whole thing? Is, is I'm somebody I could hate. You're somebody you could hate. The first thing I did was call Charles. My, Smith. that's how I knew you were my nigga, homie. <laughs> I was Say. like, yo, just so you know. We're going to make it happen. She yeah, said, she, niggas she, gonna... she she dead ass said she's gonna rock your world. She can't wait to talk to you. He was like, that's why I fuck with you. Say, brother. homie, listen. Because <laughs> most like, hey, 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 because because, because a nigga happen. because my nigga is a player type nigga too. Mm-hmm. So he we don't know what. We don't know which one of us wanna shoot our game, right? Yeah. yeah. My we nigga <laughs> Come on now. My nigga kept it so player. He called me up and woo 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 woo. That's how I know he fucked with me. <laughs> That's how Let's I know he fucked with me. Yeah. That shit was like a week after because we just did. We come just, on, homie. We just ran yeah. with. So, yeah. so nigga, I, I, nigga, I come, I come playing gentleman because I know I got action in it, and I didn't want to look like a sucker, and I, I didn't want to look like a yeah. sucker taking the bait. Right. So, uh, it's a lot going on. It's a lot of yeah. So, mental so, yeah, warfare. Yeah. Yeah. So, gotta... so when she coming here and get drunk mm-hmm. on us. I say, well, shit, nigga, uh, handle with care. I like that. Because I left with her. Uh, and, 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 and we talked about some things on this podcast, and, and it, it corrected a lot of shit. And I didn't want to be mistaken for the things that I talk about. Okay. Because now she's in my care. Right? Yeah, true. And she left her pretty drunk. Nigga, and, and, I ain't and hear no complaints. Uh, you know, uh, and 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 we kept in contact the whole time. He let me know yeah, the entire yeah. time. Yeah, she's good. She's taken care of. But but fine, but so. if some niggas would have took advantage of that, absolutely. That was, you see what I'm saying? Most, was, most. And we went out publicly. So we went to us. We went out, out when we left here, homie. Oh, uh, there was a moment when she was in the back seat where she was laid out. Uh, most niggas. Where we come from, go reach back there and touch that pussy because we low down and dirty motherfuckers. Mm. But at some point, we grow past that, especially when we start having daughters. See, when we ain't got no daughters and all that, we reach back and try to play with that pussy because we (laughs) we take advantage of them when they Uh. drunk because the whole game is say, let's get her drunk. Say, let's get these hoes over, nigga. Spike the punch, right? We learn this behavior. But as we grow to try to learn to become men, we grow past the boyish behavior. True. But I know a lot of niggas would have took advantage of that situation. There's a couple suckers yeah. that would have said, hey, yeah. I'll take it. And on camera and full TMZ. Because there's some things that happen yeah. off camera, homie. Yeah. We like, come on, homie. But homie, this is where y'all wore my respect. Y'all could have put some shit out, my nigga. That y'all probably would have made $20,000 <laughs> off a 10-minute yeah. clip. Yeah. Y'all would have made $20,000. Nine minutes, 33 second clip. But you know what I'm saying? I'll fuck with you. Say, homie, no, 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 homie, listen. You I'm, know. That's just yeah. being real. Yeah. We yeah. real over here. Uh, Trust uh, me. It don't do us no benefit not putting that shit uh, on. Let me nah, just say nah, that. Nah, 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 it does. Uh, it makes us, uh, it well, makes us high value men. In the God long damn, run. Uh, right. uh, nah, homie, listen. <laughs> it, uh, it, 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 uh, it, it, it separates y'all, homie, in, in, in a generation where men are being devalued, homie. Uh, uh, nigga, y'all can make a lot of money. Uh, hopefully, but 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 trying to do the right thing out here, man. Uh, even you if know? y'all, e- e- even if y'all don't, homie, uh, somebody will be be there to embrace y'all at the gates of heaven for 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 Hello. being the kind of men y'all are. Uh, because say, homie, if y'all were to release that shit, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> See, if y'all y'all were to release that shit, homie, uh. Uh, <laughs> it ain't even worth it. Like the nah. end of the day is there's just I never feel like and we all done got drunk. She just yeah. let loose. She ain't even do anything wrong. No, it was a great goddamn listen, time. Listen, if this was the club, it was a great shit. goddamn club. Let night. me just say this, homie. She Fuck, did. I ain't mad homie, at her. listen. She fucking. Hey, and, and, and this ain't to toot my motherfucking horn, but nigga, Come she on. did what anyone was supposed Come to do. Choose up. She said, shit. "You got a what and a what, man? Oh, when they, when they, hey, yeah. hey, when they choose up, this is what know. they do. 
Oh, you just have to remember. You heard what he said? You just found you a high value man. <laughs> so, so you, so, how uh, uh, listen, in my mind, she's a celebrity and she was a True. celebrity crush. Most niggas would cream their pants. Most niggas would lose their composure. Mm -hmm. But nigga, you still have to remain Kept it pimp. and let her know that I'm not a, I'm not like them suckers. <laughs> so on top of that, Kevin Gates, my partner, so he done call called in. in so that's episode. like throwing an alley hoop. Yeah, that was yeah. a record. Yeah, that's like throwing an alley hoop. I, I saw y'all got the link too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That and, was dope. Uh, every chance we get, we got the link, man. And that shout out dope. to uh, a big extra plug. I got to fuck with him too, man. Big uh, extra okay. plug is fire. Uh, and up. nigga, hold on, he nigga. I ain't, I ain't told y'all the best part. Come on, nigga. Shout out to Travis Scott, nigga. I spent the okay. whole backstage. Whoa, um, okay, uh, really. Man, let me just say this, That's my nigga. Look. Yeah, That's a big say, look. Say, homie, listen. I, man, listen. That nigga put on a motherfucking show. Oh, That's a nigga that can perform, yeah, homie. Yeah. Whatever yeah. them ticket prices is, it's worth paying because it ain't a hundred niggas on stage. He got the lights. He got, homie, that nigga put on. Nah, but he, he got his crowd figured out. Uh, it, uh, it, it was like being in a movie, and he performed the whole time. Then he brought out, uh, uh, which one married to Cardi B? Uh, also. He brought him out. Oh, uh, nah, <laughs> man, them nigga put on a hell of a Big show, shit, homie. Yeah. Them nigga, it, homie, he performed. His crowd loves him. Loves he performed. Him. He's a performer. Wherever he goes. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah. His manager fuck with me. Uh, cool. So, so, uh, I run into his manager. So I run into them at the strip club at, at Ecstasy in Dallas. So his manager tell me come to the show. They give me backstage passes. Oh. Uh, uh, Kevin Gates and them come in. Uh, I fuck with Gates. Oh man, the whole city out uh, there. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. They, they, they fucking with me, homie. Uh, That's dope. uh, a uh, 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 big extra plug, man. So. Uh, I, I got a I got a producer by the name of Measy out of Mississippi that does a lot of the Tubi movies with Murder Pain. Okay. Uh, man, he came through man and, and dropped a badass movie script uh, for me and Trap Boy Freddy. All right. Uh, so you you doubling and tripling down on this movie? Uh, well well homie, people say well he hate rappers, he hate rap music. Uh, yeah. I hate the detriment. Uh, I'm a product of, of rap music. I'm a product of, of of the culture that went negative. Because you have to remember, nigga, before we went negative, we was dancing. We was doing a kid in play. We was Big Daddy Kane. We was we, MC Hammer uh, yeah. with the rap music, nigga. We, we wasn't gangster gangster. We had different components, nigga. We got, and, and so for whatever reason, everything that went gangster killer. And I'm saying, mm -hmm. okay, nigga, if you want to go gangster killer, go gangster killer. But we need some more LL Cool J nigga, some I Need Love type music, nigga. <laughs> we, we, yeah, we need some more big. I heard it too, yeah. <laughs> we <laughs> need some more Big Daddy Kane, <laughs> nigga, some smooth nigga that can dance <laughs> with the suits, that fuck with the hoes. <laughs> nigga, we all can't kill and drill, my that's nigga. That's real, that's real. Everybody thinking that that's the standard, and that's what you got to do to be real. To be well, accepted as real. You well, really... when we start telling Hold these up. niggas they can't have ghostwriters, that's what we created. When we start trying to shame these niggas for being studio gangsters, it's okay to be a yeah. studio gangster, my nigga. Yeah, yeah. It's okay, my nigga. You know why? Because you talking Versus about your because you talking about your homeboy that you've been hanging with since middle school. It's okay to talk about your homeboy and you not be it because you the one that can deliver it like this. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we it's okay. I fuck with that. As long you as hang good. with him. <laughs> homie, it's okay for you to have a friend that's in the gang and you not join the gang, but you still like them. I don't, I don't know, it's tough though, man, cuz I fuck with it. I fuck with it more so if I believe you. You don't even got to be the best rapper, but if I believe you, I might even give you a pass because I believe what you say. But what if it sound good for entertainment wise? Uh, but how wild like them thin sound line. good? That's a thin line oh. where where it, where it sounds good, but it's also leading a different truth. Well, false. Oh, uh, this ain't for this. This wasn't never created to be believable. This was just talk. Why it got to be so real? It's entertainment. True. I think in entertainment, people like to see the actor act and portray an image like Denzel Washington is our favorite, right? He can't do it, he killed it. But when it comes to music, 
you always want it to be from the originator. You don't want it to be from the ghostwriter. We love R. You know Kelly, I mean? but he a child molester. We've Absolutely. been knowing this. We yeah. watched him pee on the girl. We yeah. never and, stopped and, loving and, him. And, and in all honesty, some of our That's favorite music, <laughs> some of our favorite music comes from artists who aren't really the artists. Jane a lot, Brown. A lot of the be- Michael Jackson music we heard wasn't written by Michael Jackson. There we go. A lot of the Drake music we heard wasn't written by Drake. And it's not that it's not even that Drake has a ghostwriter that writes his own records. Ice Cube wrote That's for the whole NWA. Yeah. yeah. That's a a belief, a belief that people have is so Quentin Miller wrote all this shit. He just contributed a little piece of music to those to that music. I got a heard. set, I got a whole comedy set, homie. That Scruncho. I sent Scruncho, homie. Scruncho, uh-huh. one of the funniest niggas in the comedy For game. Sure. I sent that nigga, he like my mentor after TK Kirkland. That's the nigga knocked oh, really? out TK. Scruncho yeah, the nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So Scruncho the nigga knocked out TK. TK pay you? Live Nation paid me. Okay. Well, I, Shout out to I don't Live know. Nation. I don't even know if I should be speaking at it, but I just Shout thought about it. Shout out to Live Nation. It's only because of a conversation we had. To, yeah, now nah, listen, listen, hey, like, listen, oh, listen, listen. I don't even want to talk about it if you don't want to talk about I it. I want to talk about it. Okay. I, I want to talk about it. Live Nation made it right. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. Live Nation made That's it right. It's a rare occasion where it's a big publication like. Because, yeah. because what I realized after the fact. Uh, Some people think you just, like, got kicked off. No, 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 no. Listen, I didn't realize after the fact that it was not T.K. Kirkland's comedy tour. It was Charleston White's comedy tour. I see. I didn't know. That's why when I quit, the Live Nation comedy tour quit. Because that... uh, You notice it hadn't been any more T.K. Kirkland Live Nation. It wasn't a queen. Mm. It wasn't his... Comedy tour, it was mine, but I was too inexperienced to know. It was, yeah. And it's not up to Live Nation because Live Nation didn't know how I interact. He convinced they, they don't them. Have no data sample. Yeah, so but they so they used him to learn me. It was a great idea. Wow. But it wow. was not TK Kirkland's comedy tour. It was actually Charleston White it wasn't his featuring story. TK Kirkland. Right, he convinced them to say, "Oh but man, they use TK to say let's, let's well, see what it looks like." He used me to use them, mm-hmm. and they used him to to. They had no intention on using me. Uh, they just knew I drew numbers. Yeah, so they used him to figure you. Not, nah, he, not they didn't l- use l- him l- to use. L- 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 listen to, to me. You out. Uh, if I would have had. The right person who could have contacted Live Nation, they probably would have gave me my own tour. But because he know what he know, and he know somebody I know by way of Shannon Briggs, champ. Uh, TK has been, been around. He's come on around. now, he know, he know and he's known for he hooking know. and crooking, yeah. and he's and he's always used. He he he's uh, D L Hughley. Mike Epps. So he's put a lot of people on. But for whatever reason, these people won't fool with him. I see why. So we started out as 52 cities. Once they realized I was good, they added 20-something more cities. When I quit, the tour stopped. You don't see him touring with Live Nation no more, do you? Mm. You, you were the draw. Come on now. You were the so it was draw. really my tour. I just yeah. didn't know. It was a test run. It was an experiment. Uh, cause TK been on the circus, so it's like yeah. But to have you as an added yeah, I was opener set, I, or I, I, feature, I, uh, I, I was supposed to have been hosting, but because I done so good hosting, I was upstaging him. Yeah. I was doing because Damn. it kept me on stage too much and too long. They didn't know I was that good, homie, until I started getting on stage. Mm-hmm. They didn't know I was that good, and and, and I just uh, how I, fun I, was that? Uh, it, it was great. It, it was great because it, it was like a nigga who 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 never played quarterback before and you put him in quarterback <laughs> and he's a he's a star quarterback Shiny. now. Yeah. And, 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 but but what happened was it it, it handicapped me. How so? Be, because I have a desire to learn to learn the, the 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 craft. I have a desire to learn to to learn this this business, to learn stand up comedian. Yeah. But because I got so much talent and I got so much gift in being funny, I rode the gift and the talent and I stopped learning how to deliver punchlines. Skills. So skill, so yeah. So I've had fifty 
I've had 51 comedy shows in one year from, from last October to now. Uh, okay. Two weeks ago, I just had my worst comedy show. Worst? Uh, because, because now I have writers and I have Scruncho who have given me a set. Up until now, I've been going off pure talent. Yeah, homie. you said that. To the last time you were here, you said, I don't have a set. I, mean, I, I had no set, homie. I've been going off pure concept. talent. Yeah, and pure, so I haven't, yeah, I, yeah. I haven't been doing the same set. And, and that's a sign of a, a lack of, of, of experience, right? So that's my lack of But it's good to have both because you got to have the chops. Yeah. And then you figure out a set. And then now you have your set with chops in between. So, so, on so, and so, forth. so since I've been going off talent, uh, Scruncho, I sent him all my videos. So of him watching my video, we develop a set. Great motherfucking set. How many minutes? What you got? Uh, it, it's I can do an hour set. Ooh, okay. I can do an hour set. That's a f- okay. Uh, so so most com- anybody most, who writes, that's a lot. So so I can do an hour set and, and make the crowd laugh. Uh, I so now I'm relying on the set and not my gift. And I had a table full of drunk. Niggas, six niggas that was drunk that was heckling me. Oh man! And I got none but my set to go on. Yeah, and, and, and homie, I had my worst test. show. People yeah, walking out on test. me. Uh, me and them niggas arguing back and forward. I'm getting in tour with these niggas. When I walk to this side of the stage, I got a nigga hollering. Well, what about that snitching shit? Uh, Say, hold on, let me get to you and, and, next. And, and, normally, homie, I could fall back on my talent and go to shit talking. Trying to I do couldn't fall thing. back on my yeah, set, yeah. homie. So it's okay uh, though. That well, they told me it was gonna happen. Out of fifty-one shows, nigga, I had my first bad one. <laughs> and after fifty-one, I wish it would have been at thirteen. Yeah, no, you don't. Yeah. Well, when I'm for this, nah, I because then he would have been ready to see it. I, well, yeah. listen, homie. But listen, run it hey, back. Hey, now yeah. listen to me. It, it's been about a week or two now since this had happened, and I hadn't been back on stage. Now you fired up. Yo, by oh. the way, that's a thumbnail of the show. You see, he was like that. He just looked like MJ up. right there. No, nah, man, listen, like, homie, listen, <laughs> listen. That, you that, feel me? Uh, I, I, I got to admit this. That's the first time I start questioning myself. Maybe I'm not good enough. That's how you level up, though. Homie, first that's time, hey, that's, up, that's what I'm saying. Oh, Enjoy homie, that nigga, shit. Uh, so, so that's why you said I wish I would have read into it earlier. Yeah, so homie, because because homie, run into uh, it now. So my opinion of it is like, yo, well, run into it now. It's just like, you're nice. It's just like Earl Spence, homie. Uh, he might not can recover from this loss. No, you could be coming. You gonna be your cover. But Errol Spence, listen, like, hold on, but listen, having listen, your back against the wall, I, you hear that? You from Texas? Hey, listen, homie. He he says he's talking about Big X, the plug. But listen, right, but, who brought but, but, out Errol Spence? I'm just saying, I know, but, but, but around, I know that homie, Texas homie, connection. Hold on one but, second. Well, he, I know the Texas connection. It's okay. But listen, uh, Errol Spence got that ass whooped. You got yeah, yeah, he did. That, that, that. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. We don't know if he can ever be champion again after that ass whooping. Yeah, but you'll because come because nigga, look what happened. George Foreman was the baddest motherfucker. He had everybody afraid <laughs> till he took that one loss to Ali. He never could recover. Until he got old and got back in, it ruined him because he had never lost. I before. ain't about to let you say that you can't no, get back no, in. No, 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 You're about no, no, to come no. back. But, and kill him. but, but just hear me out. Yeah, but just let me just hear me out. Just hear me out, nigga. Just hear me out, nigga. <laughs> nigga. Uh, I went back to that hotel room feeling like I wasn't, man, maybe I ain't funny enough. Man, I've been questioning myself. Bro, one bad set of kids. Yeah, man, I'm telling you, homie. On and the I got, airplane listening. I got to another show Phil coming Collins. up. <laughs> I got another show coming up. Uh, let me see. So I go shoot the movie with Amarelli and then when I leave uh, here, I think 25th. Thanks, so that's my next show. Uh, I ain't going to be as confident. Nigga, I've been a confident nigga coming out on stage because yeah. I've been having good show, cloud. Oh, oh, this fire. is my third bad show, so my confidence a little shot. Now I've been looking in the mirror saying, nigga, you might need, I might not be that popular. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah man. And that's what I'm yeah. saying. Shut the fuck this out will make you go hard. Yeah, yeah, so, hard. I'm, so universally, I'm this dude. Yeah. Right, and I'm gonna be the same motherfucker that I am on a podcast. Yeah, that thought that you're having, tell that little thought to shut the fuck up, cause you know what you are, you know yeah. who you are. So let that let that thought be a saucy t- Santana so, sucker dick. So yeah, so shout that out to Sykes and You know what I mean? That thought ain't shit. You feel I got me? You. you got this shit. So, I, I guarantee you. So with that being said, with, with my nigga saying that, uh, I had to promise them people to come back 
to do a free comedy show. That's fire. <laughs> yeah, homie, you because I, I, I didn't deliver fan. my best. How many them people paid good that, money? That's respect to the craft, though. Yeah. And, yeah. and if you yeah, really trying you know to come up in comedy, that, that, that That's what I'm saying. Way. A motherfucker like you, somebody else saying that to me, if somebody else said that to me and I was sitting in the interview, I'd just sit there and accept it. But if you're sitting there saying that to me, from the conversations we had, yeah. I'm like, I ain't, I don't, not even on this motherfucking platform, I'm going to let you say that. Because I already know the next time you come back, you're going to double up. Yeah. You're going to show everybody what time it is. So yeah, that's yeah, all yeah. that matters at yeah, the end yeah. of the day. He's going to show them what time it is. Yeah, yeah, I got to. Yeah, I got to. I mean, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They, uh, yeah. Uh, but. If T.I. can do it, you can do it. Well, this, this, oh, uh, listen, homie, listen. Uh, T.I. got a uh, little set now. He got a little 20, uh, 30 minute set. Oh, uh, this is what it showed me. Uh, you gotta you gotta study the craft, homie. The gift yeah. can only take you so far. You still have to learn the craft. Yeah, so so Mayweather got a gift to box. He still had to go he learn the craft. Work, yeah. So he had to work hard. So and, mm. and then it humbled me, right? Cause nigga, I I I, I I've been so <laughs> yeah, cocky. That shit make you question I, uh, shit. Oh, uh, listen, homie, I've been so cocky. I I ain't been following instructions. I ain't been going to the to the to the amateur Open comedy mic. club. Practicing my shit, yeah. I've been going go, off go talent. Get your shit off, I've been bro, doing, I've been doing the Allen Iverson saying I ain't got to come to practice because I'm good at the game. So which, now which you are, but you, you but, gonna be that much nicer if you. And, and then in. and, and then this is what it showed me. Uh, I'm an inexperienced comedian. Leave the crowd alone. Stick to your set. Mm. Because if I was a For now. if I was an experienced yeah. comedian, I could have rolled off of that yeah. and got into the set. Yeah. So yeah. it showed me my inexperience, and, and so uh, I, I needed that, homie. Uh, I, I needed That's that. Fire though, man. I, I needed that, nigga. Just like uh, that situation at the barber shop had to happen, so my brother can get from down tighten, there. Tighten up. Because uh, what ends up happening to people who got the gift and got the talent? They get so cocky and arrogant with the gift and the talent, they don't put in the work to mac to make the gift and talent better than what it is. Because yeah. you can all you can always get better. But nigga, we get so content with being great with the gift, yep. we don't never become excellent in it. That's Mayweather what they say, never uh, became excellent. Mm. How's it go? Hard, hard work beats talent. Yeah. When talent doesn't work. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. you be like you, if you got the work ethic too, just because you naturally gifted, you can sometimes Outbeat the person. Well, you're who's arrogant. Gifted yeah, you're arrogant, homie. Yeah, you're arrogant, feeling like, homie, I ain't gotta come I, in and do the free it. throws. I ain't gotta come in and do the drills. I ain't gotta practice. The film. That's what he yeah. said. Like, we talking like, about I, practice. Like yeah, yeah. 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 You know, like, just, nah, but I, I like, like that. seeing that you're doing different shit too, though. You're not just the guy who's always talking on IG or Facebook Live. It's I'm acting. I'm doing stand up comedy. I'm speaking to the youth. I'm like, you're here, there, everywhere. You. <laughs> You're making uh, sure that you're being seen, being uh, heard. Uh, 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 ultimately, homie, I want to go into writing or being the guy that's writing mm. the movies. Uh, just, just be, you know, helping people write uh, because you can be 90 years old and still writing if you know how to write. Have people mm. I, I asked you about, like, doing a book? Uh, I, I always. Uh, but I'm Sure. Uh, yeah, uh, always. I had I had some people, uh, one of Mayweather business partners, uh, uh, reach out to me to – to to do a documentary, so to to let them and you know maybe team money team have uh the the sole rights or, or whatever by the rights uh to my documentary. Well, help then, get it out there. You uh, know. and then ultimately they want to turn it. Uh, you know he mentioned turning it into a TV series. So so he's he's pitching this to people in the industry. Uh mm. uh homie uh yeah yeah so you know uh, it, it's just getting people. To, to buy into the man and, and, and not get so stuck on the character. You know what I think would do really well for you is an audio book, too. Yeah. An audio book read by you. So yeah. it's your book, but people hear you speaking it. It's like doing a podcast, but yeah. I can hear your story from your voice. Yeah. While I'm truck driving, while I'm at work, while I'm in the gym, while I'm... That's, I think that would do nothing. Yeah, that's a good game. Because yeah, people, right people know your voice, and they want to hear it from your voice, your perspective. Yeah, that's a good game. Uh, yeah, you obviously got a gift the that's world. outside of the shit that you and I just know. And what I mean by that is, like, a lot of times people will talk to me and they'll be like, it's, it's this dude's voice sounds like you're supposed to be doing that shit. That's right? part like, of yeah. it, man, the cadence. It, it, yeah, that's but there's obviously a lot about you. You don't just, yo, we've had so many motherfucking interviews. 
Let me tell you something. I look at the analytics all goddamn day. We yeah. had so many motherfucking interviews. When we got Some Charleston, big name motherfuckers. Yo, when we got Charleston White up here, yeah. it's gem after it's an astronomically gem after different gem. story. Home right, album? like I'm, I'm talking about the comments are crazy, the the <laughs> views are crazy, the DMs are crazy, the growth is crazy, and I genuinely just like this dude for coming up here and having a great motherfucking time. <laughs> yeah. But every time we have him up here, it's like we are like, it don't matter who you have up here. They ain't yeah. doing Charleston White nah. numbers. There's something about you that resonates with a core of individuals that. Those motherfuckers, if they're going to hate you, they're going to hate you to the death. But if they're going to love you, they're going to love you to the Art. death, too. Oh, and you got yeah, those yeah. two group of people. You're you either on the side of, I hate Charleston White, or you they love the shit. fuck out of you. The, and that's some dope shit. The, there's, there's, no, the, there's no environment, there's no entity in society uh, that I haven't entered and, and had that, that, that effect. So, so, so as a kid... Um, they, they have labels, and so... so Psychiatry and psychologists, they have labels for a family setting. So they have, mm -hmm. so you have an enabler. You have one person in your family that's gonna enable the drunk. They're gonna enable the person that's doing wrong. Yeah. You got one person in your family that seems like everybody's favorite. They call that the family mascot. So all my mm -hmm. life, I've been the family mascot, right? I'm, okay. I'm, I'm everybody's favorite cousin. I'm the favorite nephew. Everybody rooting uh, for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, when, 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 when. When they do, you know, popular, most popular in school, I, I was that kid. Okay. So, uh, I learned to be the favorite. Uh, only to begin hanging with the bad children to evolve into non-favorite, right? Uh, the one that fucked up. But. We believed in you. <laughs> but, but I'm the one that's being pulled to the side saying, why are you hanging with him? Mm. You don't belong with this crowd. So I'm the one that the school teachers is picking on because I ain't supposed to be with y'all. Yeah. So they singling me out because they know <laughs> I don't fit in with this group, but I'm doing everything to fit in. I'm going beyond <laughs> what y'all doing, yeah. making y'all laugh. So I've always been the kid who stood out, homie. I've always been the kid who the adults would identify the gift and the trait, whether that was highlighting as bad or good. So I always knew it was something different and, and special about me. Uh, I learned how to package and present. Mm. I, I learned that from a Jewish attorney. That's interesting. Uh, from a little short woman out of Baltimore, homie, uh, a very powerful Jewish attorney. She 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 took me through trainings. Uh, in Washington, D.C., uh, and she gave me words. She gave me terminology. She and and, and before A way to deliver information. But before I met her, uh. I, I never knew about white privilege. I never even heard that term. I'm a black nigga from the south. I didn't even know white privilege exists. She's I argued white, with her. White, white she woman. taught me that it exists, and she was a white mm. Jewish woman, and I, I never knew that. Uh, so what she gave me was she said Charleston. It's all about how you package it and present it. So she gave me a, a scenario that you can put shit in the box. Literally. Mm -hmm. If you put the right packaging on right it. Right bow on it. The oh. right bow on it. But boy, the presentation. What if you send and deliver that motherfucker on a helicopter? Right. And then when it get off the helicopter, it's on the back of an elephant. With beautiful women. So the presentation, yeah, yeah, yeah. how you package Still it delivering sh and know, present it. At the end of the and day. when this motherfucker <laughs> unwrap that box after the presentation and open it up and get nothing but shit. Dun, 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 dun. Men, they might be satisfied with the package and presentation. <laughs> Fuck the shit. So when people are trying to teach you these gifts and, and these skills and these tools, you can't get it while you're in training trying to learn it. It ain't until you think you learn it and you try to apply it that you begin to get it. So really that's nice where job. that's where the application of knowledge come from. A lot of people know. A lot of people have knowledge. They just know it. They can't apply it. That's why they taught 
and they can't work. That's why a lot of people know shit, but if you ask them to show them, let me make it work for you, they can't make it work. That's why I say black people know, know a lot of shit. They just don't know how to get no money. That's the application. Yeah. The application is having the knowledge and the understanding of what you know and the wisdom to put it into action to make it work where you show other people this work. Yeah. So, uh, application, but Charleston, man. let me be Dan, <laughs> let me, let me be Dan Rathers for a minute. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But Charleston, how could you take advice from a Jewish person? You obviously hate them. Uh, Stop I, 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 no, because uh, that's, well, that's what the people are say. Like, that's well, well, before, uh, I, before her, uh, I, I didn't, ha I didn't have, I, I don't have no hate. But meeting her, I didn't know nothing about what Jews was doing in the industry because I wasn't focused on the industry. Uh, I didn't know Jews ran the industry. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah I was yeah. doing youth advocacy at the time, and so I met her working on juvenile life without parole. We was trying to get abolished in America, and and so when I met her, uh, she was the first woman to say, "Charleston, uh, who who are your board of directors for your nonprofit organization?" And I said, oh, my mama, uh, my cousin. And she said, well, why don't you have any working board of directors? And I said, well, what is what are working board of directors? So she taught me how to structure my nonprofit. Yeah. That's why you can't get no funding. because you Board got your, members, man. That's why you don't got, you're don't you not supposed to have your mama as a board. You're supposed to have working board members. Well, who are working board members? You see this guy, Bob Ray Sanders, who wrote this news article about you, Charleston. He wrote a positive news article about you, and he works for the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. He's a prestigious guy. Put him on his board. He admires you. He's going to have nothing but because, good things to say Because about you. he works for the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. So he's going to be bragging about yeah. being on your board. He's because you got it. Yeah, come on now. He's a board you. member of the Hyped About Hype Youth Outreach. He's going to brag about that. So don't put your family members. Mm. Because, because there's nepotism. It's like a reference at a job. Like there you you go. can't put family or nobody so, like so, you want. Uh, so yeah. she started. She was the first one to say, well, Charleston, do you document? Do you take pictures when you're at these events? Mm -hmm. And I was saying, no, ma'am, because I don't want to feel like I'm doing it for the internet. She, she said, the well, game. Charleston, if it's not documented, it didn't happen. Show proof of work. Documentation beats conversation. If you don't have any documentation, Charleston, how can you say you've done this? Are you having people sign in she when they come? Game. <laughs> come on, homie. Yeah. So then the greatest game she told me is that, Charleston, nobody is going to help you to help your people. Nobody is going to mm. give black people the money that they need to get them out of the conditions that they're in. So you have to learn how to be self-sustainable that you're not completely requiring upon federal grants and state given money to help you with your organization. You got to find you have to be self-sustainable. She taught me how to be strong, nigga. How to self-sustain me. So then the old niggas say, well, how do you be, well, how do you be self-sustainable? You got to have something to sell. You got to have something, something to sell to your yeah. people. What's that? Dick. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking anyway. <laughs> you ain't. But, 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 what do you mean by that? Yeah, so yeah. Hold, 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 I'm finna fin fin break it I down for I you. Go ahead, I, yeah. I, I, all the bras you fucking with, you giving them that dick. She know you got a youth organization. Why she ain't helping you with some of that money and you got this youth organization? She, she, you about, she about to. You, she taking your energy. She about to. She taking your life force. She getting your calm. Nigga, that calm costs money. And you getting it away for free? Mm. Nigga, you better learn to start getting something for that dick in that calm instead of just Stop getting it away. Right people. <laughs> you better start learning how to ask for something, nigga, instead of trying to get something for that dick. Learn, because that dick got value. Hello. They need that call. <laughs> Hello. So nigga, yeah. so so if you ain't got no if you ain't got no dick to sell, sell barbecue. If you ain't got no barbecue to sell, sell dope. Then nigga, they sold us. But make sure you take this money that you doing wrong with, nigga, and do something with this money. Don't go trick. Don't go buy no rim, nigga. Do whatever you got to do to take care of your people. Whether that's selling dope. Whether well, it's going across the railroad track, cunning white people, playing games, scamming. <laughs> but you bring this money back, my nigga, to build in your village because we don't want to beg and they not go help us to feed us. Be self-sustainable. Self-sustainable. Yeah. Just know if you go do, if you choose to do wrong, my nigga, 
you got to go to jail, and you're going to go to jail. So make sure when you go to jail, you don't call your mama. Make sure when you go to jail, you don't call your girl. You call them niggas you've been running with. Mm -hmm. You call them niggas you've been doing wrong with. Don't call mama and your woman. So if you can't call them niggas, and you got to call mama and the woman, leave her some money, nigga. She gonna need some money to burn you out. She gonna need some money to get you a lawyer. She gonna need some money. To, she gonna need some money to send you some commissary, and she gonna need some money to pay bills while you gone. So commissary money, lawyer money, bond money, and you need some bill money to leave for mama and them and the woman, nigga. So while you out there hustling, hustle for that, then, nigga, because the old man say. Nigga, you can't make all this money and these people know you ain't got no job. You got to go to jail first, then, nigga, you can come spend the money. First, you got to go to that federal penitentiary if you done made all this money. Other than that, you got to find somebody in the family or in the circle who got a business mind or who got a business, and you put the money behind the one with the business mind. Other than that... We go lose everything, cause when these people come here and get you, they go realize, nigga, you done put this in mama name. Mama ain't got the kind of job to support the kind of money you got. So you gotta find somebody with the business mind and start putting into the business mind, my nigga. Somebody with credit. (laughs) There you go. Because credit beat the feds. If you maintain good credit, nigga, you don't need to show a motherfucking thing. Nigga, your FICA scope, nigga, can keep them people off your motherfucking ass. Sheesh. That's crazy. But, nigga, that's a whole nother topic. We'll talk about that another time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but, yeah, hey, before, I want, before we leave tonight, Charleston is we, bad, boy. they ain't getting nothing but gems the entire night. They almost got too much. They got too much. You know what I mean? Yeah. But before we dip out, as a man, I'm intrigued to hear what you take on everything that's going on with Israel and Palestine. Uh, Not too in depth because I don't want to get too far into it. Oh uh, well, just let me like just say this: that's murky uh, water, boy. Uh, those are two brothers fighting. Literally. One brother is wrong. The brother that looked like he's right is wrong. The brother that looked like he a wrong, low down, dirty motherfucker. Still wrong. Is the brother? <laughs> it, it, is the brother who had love and compassion for the brother who looked like he's doing right? That's mistreating his brother that looked like he's doing wrong. The Palestinians, when the Jews came from the Holocaust, America didn't take the Jews; they took the Nazis. They took in the Germans, the Nazis. That's where Trump and them come from. Because we wanted they scientists, but the the Palestinians say, "Well, the Jews can come here." Nobody wanted the Jews. They had nowhere to go after Germany, homie. The Holocaust. The Palestinians say, "Man, y'all come here, come here, man, y'all our brothers." You have to understand what goes on between Abraham and and them two brothers, and the birthright. That's what's going on way, over there. Way back. The Palestinians is the brother who say, man, we know y'all's wrong and we got different mamas. Your mama was rich. Our mama was a low-down hoe, supposed to be, but she had good love. Your mama wasn't right. Your mama was jealous, but you our brother, and you can come here even though y'all been mistreated. Y'all come here. We're going to give y'all this, and we're going to have this. The land that y'all get is a little messed up than ours. Meaning the Jews got the messed up land when they came out the Holocaust. They worked and they worked. And they took rocks and built Israel. Only to begin to take their brother's land. And their brothers saying, God damn, man, y'all didn't have nowhere to go after this. Man, y'all come do it like this. Nigga, this our land. Nigga, fuck you talking about. My mama, yeah, up. we Abrahams. We were the first born seed. Y'all ain't this. And they saying, man, y'all. We spared y'all. Nah, homie. Right. We loved y'all and embraced y'all when after y'all had been woe down, beat down, destroyed. Y'all, my brother, even though we got different mamas, the same daddy, because our mamas don't like each other, we'll learn not to like each other. Because my mama hated your mama 
I learned to hate you. you. Just off that. And that's what's happening. See, Abraham and Sarah, one of them was his woman, the other one was it, man, go on, fuck your cousin, because I can't give you no baby. So, uh, Israel is wrong. Israel is wrong. Uh, they got every tool and every capability to oppress Palestine, to listen in on them. Uh, it's but, almost like 9-11. But weren't they attacked first, though? Isn't that the, yeah. isn't that the argument? Just, just there's, to, there's a conspiracy that we attacked ourselves on 9-11. Right. It's no different than Israel. Mm. They allowed that attack to happen because they... So that they could squish them like a bull. Come on, homie. Yeah. There's still hate there amongst them, too. Mm. They're not doing this because they done this. It's still hate, and we've been wanting to do this. It's crazy. We've been taking and taking and taking. How much more? We, we can't nobody stop us from taking from y'all because we got America on our side. Mm, and we just sent and, some and, money and, over and, there. And, 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 and not only that, Ooh. America sent the most, most intimidating warship to side with Israel. So it, it makes people like North Korea and, and Iran and China want to get involved. That's because, the scary be, shit. Be, because because America and Israel are bullies. Damn. America and, and Israel are bullies. Uh, and, and, and I I stand with Palestine. Uh, yeah, I stand with Palestine, honey, because I, I know the truth. Now, I don't want to go on record as sitting here taking any side. I just <laughs> I didn't just, say Hamas. Just, no, I'm I just saying I, I didn't say Hamas. I just Hamas. want people to know that well, for me individually, for sure. But I want people to know me individually. <laughs> I ain't about uh, to share my views on this no, shit. I love my Jewish people. I'm definitely people. gonna it's respect like somebody a, else's uh, view. And uh, I, I love I, my I, I, I love my, uh, uh, I love my I love my Jewish people too. But uh, right is right and, and wrong is wrong. And my mother taught me and raised me and, and indoctrinated me to. Son, that you do right because right is the right thing to do. And, and with that belief and that understanding, there's no way that I can stand on the side with Israel and not have compassion and understanding for, the and, and for Palestine and, and not be able to, to identify who and what is right. Uh, if, if, if it, it's only so much you can take. And, and, and if you think Hamas is wrong, you're going to think black people is wrong when they can't take no more. I'm going to say that again. Well, Hamas and Palestine. And you gotta, uh, uh, you uh, know. Uh, well, Hamas, you know. it, Hamas is the street niggas in America when they get fed up. And Palestine, is the, and Palestine is the black Negroes who followed the law and went to white people's schools. We are the Hamas. Every time there's a police shooting and we tear up something, we are the Hamas. When George Floyd was murdered, we was Hamas. When we burnt down buildings and we told, we was Hamas. The black people that didn't do it, they was the Palestines. Do you see the difference? But we're all the same. But we're all the same. Listen to me. There was some black people who went out and destroyed things because... George Floyd was killed. There were some black people who didn't go out and destroy nothing. It's the same with Hamas and Palestine. You can only take so much. There's going to come a time in America when there are going to be some ignorant niggas in this country is going to do the exact same thing that Hamas done to Israel because they couldn't take no more. How many more police shootings can we take before we do what Hamas did? How many more Dylan Roof wow. shootings can we take before we do what Hamas did? Yeah. How many more injustices can we take in America before we respond like Hamas, North Korea, Iran, and the rest of the people who they try to make believe that they are terrorists? Start a revolution, basically, he said. We are the Hamas. Yeah. We are not the Palestinians, nigga. We are the Hamas niggas. So don't get tricked into what they are telling us because the Jews control the media. Mm. You already said enough dope, dope shit. <laughs> Chill out. Hey, you too. Yo, give me the camera, goddammit. You too. Chill out.
<laughs> hey, said. we're letting Charles to speak. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't mean we believe what he's saying. It. We're just letting him speak. We're letting him talk his shit. Could, yo, Orlando, could you sign us off? Because YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. You know, that's YouTube right there. Yeah. Yeah. At the door. Press the end button. Yo, Charleston. My man, we always appreciate you coming through. There's a project episode number what? 147. 147. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. You know what I'm saying? We appreciate every single one of y'all always. Dope shit. You know what I mean? Get